It is seven o'clock, but we are still waiting for a quorum. So we've got six, we still need seven more. I will continue to let people in as they arrive. Hopefully that will be very soon. Thanks, Charlie. And it's, we, the board members, because this is my first one I've joined since I'm a board member, just come in the same link and you just promote us to panelists. Correct. There, there, there is a Zoom link um, that, uh, that should have gone out that allows everybody to join through. Um, it, it's uh, fine, as long as it works. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to try to reset that. Since when it was set up originally, we've added a bunch of people since then. So it does have to be either updated. I don't have the same link, but maybe I'll try to set it out again before the next meeting, if it works. <clears throat> We're still waiting on five. Oops, wrong person. All right. Hello, everybody. Hey, Crystal. I love your top knot, Crystal. Thanks. <laughs> it disappears into my background occasionally. Oh, do you usually have one? Uh, no, but just in my meetings. Oh, today. I see. Because I, I, I usually have a bun, but if I have a background, it's just completely gone. And I yeah. completely <laughs> just... I know. You have to plan your hairstyles around Zoom now. <laughs> I'm going to rename you. We are at 12. We are almost there. Looking for one more. I just caught the tail end of your conversation, Crystal. I have to plan my hairstyle about finding the strands of hair. Looks great, John. John, be careful. It's really windy out there in that background. So. <laughs> It's going to blow your hair around. All two strands of it. I don't know what's worse, waiting for somebody to come up the, el the escalator or, el or the elevator to come to our meetings in Wiesenthal Center or like sitting here waiting for somebody to like log into Zoom. I feel like I need a plate of fried chicken to occupy me until people get here. <laughs> come on, John. I, I thought, I thought you, were getting, you're, you were making arrangements that we all get a special delivery before every meeting, no? What happened to that? You know, if I thought of it, I probably could have arranged that. <laughs> I mean, you had eight months of no of no spending. I figure it should be that's enough true. Now. But you will have to, you would have to bail me out with the city clerk because I'm sure they would be more than a, mildly a Twitter. That's fair. Is there is there any sense of how long they'll allow us to conduct this via Zoom? Has that been established at all? No, because I, I was talking to uh, one of our uh, reps, uh, Freddie Cuppen Ames, and he basically was telling me that. That really is dependent on uh, how long the health department in the county and the state say we have a crisis. Because once that passes, it's questionable as to whether they can be done by mandate or it has to be done by legislation. I think 
this might also be a matter that ends up coming before the board because I I've seen a few others looking at it, at that as a as a option. Still waiting on one. Yeah, we have somebody who will be joining us in a couple minutes. So that's the good news. You have to entertain us until then, Charlie. Work on my comedy routine. Yes, please. I don't have a comedy routine. I was looking for a picture of the old boardroom that I could make as my virtual background, oh, but I don't have good. one. I bet Barry does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Barry, you have any uh, blank, pic like slightly empty pictures of that room we used to be in all the time so that we can make it our virtual background? I don't think so. Usually it's I might, full. I might design some Soro ones with the swirls, with the lime green, if anyone's interested, because I'm just looking at the background. I might go into Photoshop and make some for us. You know, I don't, um, li I don't Mar like it. People Martin just did at disappear. One point. Mar Martin tried that at one point, and it was a little it disturbing is. to look at. It's very <laughs> hard. It was, it was like a floating head in the middle of a, of a screen. All right. Hey, it was fun when Doug was around because I would twit him about it because he was the one who designed it. And, uh... Right. Um, let's. It is. Hey, cool. Oh my God. We got thirteen. There we go, go, Olga. Really nice. That was not. So I'm gonna go with the Honey I Shrunk the Kids background. Um. <laughs> it is seven oh seven. I'm gonna call this meeting to order. Um, we will take a roll call here. I have. And Gloria, you can mark these down as the people who are here um, in your minutes. Okay. I have. You, you, or you're welcome to take the roll yourself if that makes yeah, it easier for you. Yeah, do it for because it. I have an order. Um, Gary, I think you're here, right? Yes. Sophia? Yes. Ken? Olga? Crystal? Chevy? Chevy's not here. Okay, Barry, yes. Yeah. Jonathan? Is, neither of them is here. Susan? Terrence? Ter Terrence? Ter Ter Terry's here. Yeah. Okay, yep. David? Dan? Mm -hmm. Paula? Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. Um, Charlie, yes. I am here. Richard Bloom? Nope. Jonathan? Jared? Yes, right? Mm -hmm. I think I saw Jared. Yep. Brian? Yes, I think I saw Brian there, right? I'm here, yes. Michael Lynn? Yes, I saw him. John? Yes. yes. Gloria? Yes. Dina? I'm here. No. Robbie? Sure. Yes? Yeah, yeah, he's here. Okay. Um, Steve? It's Gideon? He's not here. Okay. Thanks. So uh, we have a total of 25 people, right? Correct. You should, right. As of right now, 14 here and 11 not here, though, from experience, keep an eye out because some of them do join us a little late on occasion. Okay. Um, the first item on our agenda is the general public comment. Um, this is anything that is not currently on our agenda that you would like to speak about. Um, if you are a caller, you would press uh, star nine to raise your hand and star six for, to unmute yourself when called upon. Um, all speakers tonight will be given two minutes for their public comments either on this topic or on general. I do keep a uh, track. And once at about 90-ish seconds, I will show you a clock at which point at the two minute marker, unfortunately we will mute you. So please keep uh, a tally of that. Uh, Zach, you're the only person with their hand raised at the moment. So your mic is now live. Please unmute yourself and speak. 
Yes, hello again. I am calling in because I'm wondering when my Public Records Act request will be filled. It's now been well over a month since I was given some ridiculous, my computer broke excuse. And I do find it in increasingly suspicious that this request was not filled before these meetings on these absurd grievances. I would like an email from Ken clarifying when the production date is. He did not reach out to me after the last meeting, and I would like to know when those documents will be furnished. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no more public general public comments, uh, we will move to the next item on our agenda, brief board announcements. Does anybody have an announcement that they would like to share. Olga, go ahead. I actually wanted to make an announcement about um, something we voted on last month, the uh, the Beverwill lot that was going to be sold off to a private homeowner. Um, unfortunately, I looked at the council file today and despite dozens of comments um, agreeing with us and our CIS, of course, um, Paul Karatz and city council voted unanimously to sell off the park adjacent land to a private homeowner. So I just wanted to let everybody know that that happened. Um, that was probably the fastest turnaround I've seen on uh, CIS, so. It's a bummer. Um, I'll also comment, we, we've got a couple of emails about the target project. Um, just be aware, the target project, apparently there were some changes made to the uh, CUP application or they applied to something that was not on ours. So we're, Do you want so me to clarify are, it or, oh no. Um, I, I'm just more a matter, it's not, not so, just an, as an announcement wise, I'm sure it may come back up on our agenda in the future. Just an FYI, um, because there were some complaints that arose, but I'm sure we'll likely come through land use first. Um, are there any other public job brief board announcements? Yes, um, we're planning on training for the, um, for the team, hopefully in January, um, we're still trying to determine the topics that will be covered during the training. Um, hold that, hold that thought to committee reports. That's really on the train on the um, board development committee. Oh, okay. Yeah, hold that thought just a little while longer. Sure. All right. Um, I see a hand up from Lori and we're past the general public comment. So I'm gonna unmute you for the moment, but just to confirm that I didn't miss your hand from before. Lori, your mic is, is now live. Is this general public comment or is this something on the agenda? It's a general public comment. Okay, I must've missed your hand. So go ahead, I will give you your two minutes. You didn't miss my hand. I didn't raise it until a moment ago. And it, Go ahead, I'm gonna let you go, oh, go ahead. I'll make it quick. Please. Um, in the past, I know that the board would send out, you know, there's a meeting list that we've all signed up to receive emails from SORO NC, like when meetings are happening. So like I should have, coulda, woulda, shoulda got an email letting me know. Those emails are not being sent anymore. I'm not sure why, not just to me, but to my knowledge, not to anyone. And the other thing is you guys might want to update because I was on a meeting last night and then I got a thank you letter again from our fearless president who's not our president anymore, Martin. You know, it, it automatically, I don't know what you guys have done to the public safety meeting, but now it makes you register and then it thanks you on behalf of the president, Martin Epstein. So I'm just letting you know, I do, whenever I've participated recently in the public safety meeting, um, I've had to sign up and then I get this weird thank you letter from Martin, but really it should probably be from Charlie. Anyway, that's all. So I'm not getting the emails I should get and then I'm getting weird emails I shouldn't even be getting. Thank you. Lori, if you could send me an email after this meeting, um, I'm not, I, I will look into this issue. I don't have any information about it, nor do I know where you're gonna get a thank you email from. So, but if you can shoot me an email, either president at soronc.org 
um, I will look into it. I'll forward you the email that I got Thank from you. Martin. Excellent. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. All right, back to our brief board announcements. Um, Terry, your hand is up. Go ahead. It's not an announcement. It's, it's just that I have a concern that we're having stakeholders have to sign in for a meeting. I would agree with your assessment there, which is another and, reason why I wanted to look into it. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that that was covered also, not just the fact that an email was going out from the former president. That, that, that was the uh, part that I was most uh, concerned because it shouldn't be that way. And I, at all in any in any meeting so yes i'm yeah, definitely going to make that. sure of that uh, thank you for clarifying seeing no more brief board announcements we're going to move to uh community reports if you are here from a office um please raise your hand i see melissa uh, melissa you are now unmuted so yes you were hold on oops sorry my mistake there we go. Melissa, you're, go ahead. You can unmute yourself. Hey. Oh, hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hey, uh, this is Melissa. Um, I'm a field representative for assembly member Richard Bloom. Um, I just got a couple updates for you uh, this evening. As you, some of you might know, the legislature was sworn in just this past Monday, December 7th, um, and will reconvene in January after the holidays. Um, as assembly member Bloom did mention uh, when he was visiting last month, um, that we continue to process ED cases, EDD cases at an unprecedented rate, as you might imagine. Um, we're at 18 unemployment, 1800 unemployment related cases between March and November in comparison to the usual 20 to 30 uh, that we process each year. So we're, we're still very busy with that. Um, I did wanna um, announce again that uh, Covered California, it's still open enrollment. If you want to be covered by January 1st, you must apply by the 15th, but open enrollment does continue until January 31st when it closes. And if any of you, because I was just in a meeting where I also got this question, um, if you already are um, receiving insurance via Covered California, you do not have to reapply uh, during open enrollment. But I would urge you um, or anyone you know who um, has a health plan through Covered California to look at the rates as uh, they might be able to get a better rate. Um, I also wanted to say that we are still um, accepting bill proposals for poten potential legislation in January. We'll have a clear idea in January as to what bills we'll be carrying, um, obviously a focus on um, the environment. Um, and when I come back in January, um, I will tell you what we have started to introduce. Um, and also, I know that uh, Charlie and uh, most of the board should have my email, but if you or anyone you know um, has an idea for a legislative proposal, I would be happy to send you a form. Um, it, it's a great way to get involved. And like I tell lots of folks that this is actually, this is where um, laws happen is that uh, people in the community, they see something, they get an idea, uh, they come to us or another legislator and it, you know, it then becomes a bill and then law. So um, that's all for me tonight. Um, thank you for having me. And uh, if you need anything from our office, uh, we're always here. You can email me whenever. And Charlie has my email if you guys want a legislative proposal form. John, did you have a question for Melissa? Your, your hand's up. Uh, no, I really had a request to deliver a uh, budget advocate report at some point in this uh, segment. In the brief board announcement, in the um, community, community reports, John? Yeah. Or if you want, I can just do it later next, next month. Um, or you can put it in the committee reports. Okay, that's fine. All right, so I'm going to your hand for now. Thank you, Melissa. Yes, and Charlie, uh, I, I got your email um, and I will have a response for you sometime tomorrow. Thank you, much appreciated. Of course. Um, hold on here. All right. Um, I have a Patty who's got her hand raised. I'm not sure if that's for a uh, community report. Patty, where are you, are you calling from? Um, I'm a stakeholder. Hi, good to see everybody again, except Michael Lynn, who was mean to me last week on the meeting. 
I just wanted to have a public statement, but you know, you let Lori in late, so I thought maybe I could too. You could speak on the topic that is coming up later on the agenda, that'd be appreciated. So I, I thought it was a, um, a comment that was on, her hand was raised on time. So fortunately no, that period is she over. No, she wasn't, she admitted she wasn't, but. I, I'm aware, but it was an error that we needed to correcting. So I apologize, but I'm going to lower your hand now. Um, go ahead, Freddie. The floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Um, sorry, uh, I'm right now in two different meetings at the same time. Thanks to virtual meetings, we can do that. Um, so, um, uh, quick board announcements. Uh, planning 101 training um, offered by the Department of City Planning is available Friday, December 11th from 2 to 3.30 p.m. and Tuesday, December 15th from 4 to 5.30 p.m. I'll be emailing the link uh, for anyone that's interested in the Planning 101 training. Uh, it is required for planning and land use uh, members um, uh, according to the leadership orientation policy by the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners. Um, as you know, um, there is a digital media policy. Um, currently, our department is holding an information session to provide um, a forum for feedback and more comments. Um, in addition to that of the Board and Neighborhood Commissioners meetings and open sessions. On Wednesday, December 16th, from 5 to 6.30 p.m., there will be an information session uh, that will allow uh, the public and any board members to provide any feedback towards that dig digital media policy. Um, as you know, we are currently entering elections. Um, so um, I just want to remind you that candidate filing period runs from February 6th, 2021 till March 23rd, 2021. And the vote by mail application period begins April 9th, 2021 till June 1st, 2021. Um, any vote by mail ballots must be postmarked by election day uh, and received within three business days thereafter. Election day is Tuesday, June 8th, 2021. Um, also, uh, if you are a financial officer and uh, need to complete your financial officer training or you are a board member interested in what financial officers have to do, uh, don't forget to sign up for the city clerk's uh, funding program and training, uh, which will be made available on Tuesday, January 12th at 2 p.m. and Tuesday, January 26th at 10 a.m. Uh, I will be sending out the link and email to the whole board. Um, and also, if you have not been receiving any of my emails, uh, please contact me so I can make sure that you are added to the email list. I want to make sure all of the board members are receiving the emails that I'm sending to the neighborhood council board. Um, and let's see, draft media. So, oh, um, and as you know, uh, our department uh, recently updated the uh, bylaws in accordance to two different ordinances that were passed by city council. One was the uniform, uh, uniform Age Ordinance uh, under Council File 18-0467 and the uh, Stakeholder Definition Ordinance under the same Council File. Um, I sent an email to the whole board uh, with regard to those bylaw changes as required by those two ordinances and uh, provided the track change PDF, the word block of the final and the PDF of the final bylaws that um, should be updated on your website and uh, ratified by this board as soon as one can. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful holiday and new year. Freddie, can I ask you a couple questions, quick questions? Yeah. Um, number, um, so you just lost my train of thoughts. Um, are, those, are those planning meetings required by stakeholder members as well as board members of planning uh, of land use? For the planning and land use, that is required for anyone that's part of the planning and land use uh, committee. Are you are you recording them to send out? Um, they, they mentioned that at one point, but not everybody so can they, make it to a did, middle of the day meeting. They did record it and put it on YouTube, but that doesn't qualify towards the training part aspect that the city Department of City Planning um, does. Well, your your meetings are in the middle of the day. I'm not Freddie, so is the interactive go-to webinar that's still accessible anytime an option? Um, that one was available. I don't know if it still is. Um, I'm, because I'm, I, I thought I saw it in your email, so I just want to clarify. Yeah, I, I, because it's the Department of City Planning that manages it, um, I, I've been asking questions to see if they can do it at a later time for those that are working as well. Um, I've gotten that feedback from various board members from my neighbor councils and then also the on-demand uh, feature that they offered as well. 
Um, so th these are a couple questions that I've been asking, but I have not gotten a response yet. And I'm going to be following up again um, before the end of the week. Um, Terry, your hands up. Go ahead. Well, that was the question I was just going to ask because many board members across the city have gone back to work, but they're still scheduling meetings during the day when most people can't do it anymore. Thank you. Barry, go ahead, your hands up. Yeah, I already took the training through the webinar. Does that no longer count? Uh, for the planning uh, 101 yeah, planning training? 101. Um, if, if you already completed it um, already, because they, they were offered in October, uh, then um, that, that, that does count. Um, okay. But I'm, I'm just, it's like a reiteration just in case. I have one other question for you, Freddie. What are all those pronouns after your name about? Oh, uh, I'm on my cell phone right now because uh, I'm in two meetings. Um, so yeah. I'm in my personal Zoom. So it has my first name, last name, and then my, my pronouns, uh, he, him, his, and L. Uh, for Latinx community, uh, it's the masculine form uh, pronoun for him in Spanish. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Freddie. No problem. <laughs> okay. Um, there is an announcement from the uh, LA, uh, the West Los Angeles Community Police Station, that they're having a toy drive giveaway. It's Tuesday, December twenty second, from twelve to two p.m at 1645 Corinth Avenue in the parking lot behind the building. Um, there's a flyer for it as well. If anybody is interested in the flyer, please shoot me an email. Um, if you're uh, a caller in, you can, it's president at soronc.org and I can forward you the flyer or any board member um, that would like it, just shoot me an email and I'll send it around. Um, not seeing any more um, community reports. Uh, we'll move to the consent agenda. Any item on the consent agenda can be moved or moved from the consent agenda um, at any time. Um, and then at which point will be moved later in the meeting to be voted on. That can be moved by either by a, a board member or a stakeholder. Um, I see a stakeholder's hand is raised. So let me go ahead and um, with me. Jackie Bloom, are you trying to remove an item from the consent agenda? Hi, yes. Which one? I would like to remove the formation of the homeless committee. Okay. Phrase. Sure. Um, clearly, you guys have a history of um, questionable strategy towards homeless. So I think it deserves a bit more time and some extra oversight. So would love to pull that. Thank you. Sure. We'll move later to the agenda. Right. I saw a hand up from some board member who did put it down. All right. Um, with that being said, we will vote on the two consent agenda items. One is the draft meeting minutes of November the 19th, and the other is the motion to establish an election ad hoc committee. Uh, Gloria, we unfortunately with Zoom, we have to have an actual vote as opposed to a consent straight vote. So you've got to take an actual vote of everybody. Okay. Present. Gary? Yes. Uh, Sophia? Yes. Ken? Yes. Olga? Yes. Crystal? Yes. Chevy? You're not here. Barry? Yes. Jonathan? He's not here still. Susan? Not here. Terry? Yes. David, I guess he's not here either, right? Dan, not here. Paula, not here. Uh, Charlie? Yes. Richard, not here? Yes, no, I'm here, okay. yes. Okay. Jonathan, not here. Jared? Yes. Brian? Yes. Michael? Yes. John? John?
Looks like we lost him. I think we lost John. I'm sure he'll be back so shortly. Okay. Um, Gloria, yes. Dina, she's not here. Okay. Uh, Robbie? Yes. Steve? Not here. Okay. Gideon, not here. Okay, Dina, not here. John, not here. Okay. Jesus, not here. Okay. okay, so but now if John's still not here, we have 14 yeses. Well, yeah. John, John just rejoined us. Okay, so John. John, you want to vote on the consent agenda? I, I vote yes. Yes, okay. Thank you. Um, no, I'm looking for your name. Hold on. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Fifteen zero zero. Thank you very much, Gloria. Yep. All right. Um, the next up on our agenda is the committee reports. Um, I put five minutes for mine. I have very very little to talk about. Um, there are a. Let's see. No, I really have nothing to talk about other than um, there were some questions asked about a couple of items that come up later in this agenda. Um, I will discuss them when we get there, but I was, I did receive clarification today regarding them. And I was, as I said, I'll discuss them later about the NPGs that are on the agenda that there is no problem with moving forward with them today. Um, and it, essentially that is about it. Um, are there any changes to board committee membership um, this would include the newly formed election ad hoc committee, um, which obviously will be in place until the election. And if you are running for the election, you cannot join that committee. Um, and we will, if since homelessness was removed, if that is a committee, then we'll have that discussion later today. Is there anybody that would like to uh, change their board committee membership? Remember, if you are new to the board, you have to join at least one committee. So Sophia, you're up first. Can I join the Transportation, Public Safety, Outreach, and Quality of Life Committees? Yes. Trans Sorry, I'm going to update the website to Transportation, Quality of Life, Public Safety, and Public Outreach. Safety. Thank you. All right. And Brian, I saw your hand up as well. I'd like to join Outreach, Public Safety, Parks and Rec, and Robertson Revitalization if the latter two meet. And for a while that one was being met with during outreach, though it hasn't, uh, you said outreach, Parks and Rec, Robertson and transportation? And public outreach. safety. Oh, public safety, sorry. Okay, sorry. Not transportation. Right. Yeah, okay, just gonna make, cause I'm gonna make the updates while we're sitting here. Um, Olga, I saw your hand up as well. And then just a question before I'm done. Oh, sorry, Olga, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, if we vote on homelessness later on, we will have an opportunity to join since it's a new committee? Correct. Um, okay. We'll do that right afterwards if it, if it does get accepted here. Um, Olga, go ahead. I just wanted to add, um, I wrote the motion for the ad hoc election committee, so I'm happy to chair the first meeting um, and whoever shows up can join then. Um, I'm also not running, so I'm, I'm happy to be involved there, but just to clarify, nobody nobody's chairing that yet. So we'll put you on that committee. Is anybody else interested in joining and not making it a one person committee? I will. Thank you, Gloria. All right, I have to create that in the website. Um, Terry, go ahead. I'd also like to. Perfect. But there's a problem with that motion though, Charlie. Okay. Uh, there should also have been the uh, city clerk because they're the ones actually running the uh, uh, election. Dunn is only doing the outreach. It's already passed as, as is, but I have no problem. I, I mean, right. yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with your assessment. I just don't know how to change it now. Um, though I'm sure the ad hoc committee can come back next month and propose 
to change to change that and make any necessary changes. So I think for now we're okay, but I don't disagree that, that we would need to make that change. Does anybody else uh, like to add or leave a committee? Jonathan? Um, just one question. Oh. I didn't fully understand Terry's concern. Could you repeat that, Terry? The ad hoc committee also has to work with the city clerk because they're the ones actually running the election and the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment is only doing outreach uh, endeavors. That's all they're doing. So for that committee to be working, they also have to work with the city uh, clerk. Okay, so Charlie, a few weeks ago, was it last month or the previous month, I think you are asked to provide a name for a contact and you provided them with my name. Does that count, Terry? I don't, I, I think that was that was the form that was sent regarding the setup of the locations for, for voting. But again, I, I don't wanna get into the details of the election ad hoc. I think since there's three of you now, you can have a, a meeting or, or whatnot and figure out um, what if anything needs to change or or have that discussion if we need to send them something new by all means we can um okay jonathan your hand was up go ahead yeah um can you add me to public safety and transportation please absolutely thank you all right committee and liaison reports events and legislative issues um, John, you want to now present that issue that you were? Yeah, uh, there is a report that just came out, which I will send to the board tonight from the budget advocates, which basically outlines uh, what the current status of the city's finances are. I don't know if any of you subscribe to the LA Times or go to its website, but today there was a rather lengthy article regarding what the city council is proposing to do with regarding layoffs and cuts to services to various departments. So we are in a period of time where finances are going to be very strapped and uh, I will cover part of it as to how I feel that's going to apply to the neighborhood council's finances in the next upcoming fiscal year in the treasurer's report, but I won't cover it at this point. Right. Um, anybody else from a committee or liaison report? Or for that matter, um, oh, any of our, any well, of our four committees? Yes, Gloria, go ahead. Now would be the time to bring up your <laughs> Okay, so I, I believe that Doug and Marge, they volunteered to do some training for us. And as you know, the year is almost over. And in terms of the time frame, we're considering some time in... January, probably the weekend, maybe the last two weekends of the month of January, probably a Sunday. In the next few days, I will send an email to the team where I will highlight some of the topics that are being discussed. And if you believe that there are some other topics that should be addressed during the training, they welcome your ideas. And also you will give me some input in terms of the timeline of the training. Okay. Excellent. I'll send a message in the next few days. Thank you, Gloria. Anybody, any other committee chairs or any reports? I'm, I'm not sure whether this is applicable here or not, but uh, I'll bring it up and let you decide, Charlie. Uh, I met uh, over the phone yesterday with Larry Demers uh, with regard to the Soro Festival. And he wanted to attend tonight's meeting, but wasn't able to do so doing, due to a prior commitment. He did ask if he would able to write a letter and if I would present it to, to the uh, board. I have a letter, it just arrived about maybe 10 minutes ago. I could either read it here or during the treasurer's report. I mean, technically speaking, now would be, it's a committee report, so I mean, it's related to your committee, so you might as well bring it up now. Okay, and this is addressed to the board, and it's called a statement regarding the festival and a request for support. Dear Soro NC, 
I understand the Soro Festival is being discussed at the meeting tonight. I felt it was important to share my support for this community event and what I have observed over the last 22 years of being a part of this amazing community gathering. I moved into the neighborhood in 1998, the year the festival was born. It was, it was quaint. It consisted of a few kid rides and activities, a dozen vendor booths and a stage where the local schools and bands played. While the event itself left a lot to be desired, the number of neighbors that came out to spend a couple of hours walking Robertson was amazing. I learned so much. We significantly expanded our list of volunteers, found new directors and community and committee chairs, and suddenly people knew what and who Soro stood for, our community. That was a huge win, something we had not been able to previously accomplish. Since then, the quality of the festival has improved dramatically. It has more than tripled in size and the several organization is well known in our community in downtown. I believe the festival has been a driving force for the name recognition Soro now enjoys and remains the primary outreach effort that connects Soro to the community and its stakeholders. It certainly has not been easy. Every year we face new challenges, finding volunteers, managing city permits, laws and the ever-changing hoops the city puts, us, puts up in front of us is daunting, but every year the festival remains the pinnacle of what Soro is about, the community. We gather, we meet new neighbors, we spread the word about the amazing work that Soro NC has accomplished for the community, and it provides a conduit to find new volunteers. Tonight I ask that for the NC's continued commitment to support and partner with Soro Inc. to put on this event. I know it represents a big investment. I know that we have all have a desire to help the homeless and fiscally impacted families right here in our neighborhood. But I believe that those topics are easy to accomplish when we have community support. And the best way to get community support is through the festival. So I ask, can we count on Soro to again support the annual festival by providing your annual $10,000 sponsorship of the event, finding a new event chair or leadership team to organize and make the event happen. I know the, that COVID remains a possible issue that could again derail our desire to put on this event. But I am an optimist and believe that in the year to get out our neighbors back out into the street to reintroduce them to Soro and each other. Let's invest in our future. Let's us again embrace our stakeholders and show them how special Soro is and what the NC does for our community. Thank you, Larry R. Demers. We put that on the agenda for next month if you want to write a motion related to that topic. Um, are there any other committee reports? The next item on our agenda is confirmation of Terrence Gomes as the vice chair of the Public Safety Committee. Um, this does not, this just requires a confirmation. Um, is there any public comment as to this topic? If so, please raise your hands. Seeing none, is there any board discussion on this topic? Go ahead, Barry. I have a question for Terrence. Were you present when those rocks were placed under the freeway? Not, not in the beginning, no. I found out about it after. Thank you. Seeing no other questions, let's vote. Gary? Gary? Gary, you're muted if you're answering. Sorry, I'm entering the votes on my computer so I can't see the screen. I know, I'll let um, you know. Okay, so I'll come back to Gary. Sophia? Ken? Yes. Olga? Yes. Crystal? Yes. Chevy? I guess she's not here. Um, Barry? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Susan? I think she's not here. Terry? Yes. David? 
He's not here. Dan is not here, right? Paula is not here. I'm back. Oh, Gary? Gary. Yes. Okay, so you you know what we were. I'm back. On? I'm back. Yes. Okay. I'm having. Okay. So the next person, Paula, we said Paula is not here today. Charlie? Yes. Okay. Richard? I don't think yes. he's here. No, I'm here. Yep. Yes. Sorry. Jonathan? Rich Jonathan. Brand? He's not here. And you, you can feel free to skip the ones that aren't here. I just ask later, Gloria, just so you know. Once you realize they're not here. So, Jared? Yes. Brian? Yes. Michael? Yes. John Lieberman? Yes. Gloria, yes. Dina is not here, right? Correct. Um, Robbie? I don't think he's here. Yeah, he's here. He's here. He's here. Yeah. Okay. He's a yes. Steve is not here. You've just joined us, actually. Oh, just Steve. now. Okay. So so we're, Steve, voting, we're, we're voting on, on Terry being the uh, vice chair of public safety. I vote yes. Okay, Gideon is not here, right? Correct. Okay. Okay, so everyone's here voted. Thank you, 17 yeses. Perfect. 17 yes, zero no's, zero abstentions. Excellent. All right, the, the, next, <clears throat> the next three items on the agenda, and we'll take them each in turn. I want to introduce them as, as one, is we had grievances filed, um, three separate grievances, they're all on the website, that were filed with the city. <clears throat> the city done has certified each of them. Um, and at this point, we have essentially two options to determine what we want to do with those. I'm gonna read them from, um, me here for one second. Essentially, the, the two options that we have is either that we consider the grievance in accordance with the grievance process in our, in our bylaws and make a decision to either sustain and cure or to reject the grievance. Uh, the second alternative is to waive consideration of the grievance and request that the, the department go forward with this um, grievance directly to the regional grievance panel. Um, at executives meeting last week, the, the recommendation that we were going to make from executive was to send it to the regional grievance panel on all three of them. Um, and so we will be deciding whether or not <clears throat> either we're going to consider it in-house with our, within our own bylaws or send it out to the regional grievance panel. Um, we will start by taking, are there any technical questions from the board? Yes, Barry. Have any of them been rescinded? Not as far as I've been informed, no. They're Thank still you. Pending. Any other technical questions? All right. As I discussed earlier, we will call on each of the um, public. You are given two minutes to speak, and I will be teaching, keeping a timer, and I will show you the clock as well, 90 seconds um, from when you begin speaking. Nigel, you are first up. Your mic is now on. You can unmute yourself and begin speaking. Hey, how's it going? Uh, yeah, so just wanted to say that it's kind of sadly transparent that these grievances are, you know, politically motivated um, to remove a board member that the grievance don't agree with and don't like. Um, the supposed violation is basically a non-issue. Um, should also be noted that one of the grievance, Jonathan Tesler, is now a board member, so really his grievance should be withdrawn anyways. Um, but if you guys have to take an action, you should absolutely send it to the regional grievance committee. Um, you should not self-investigate it. Uh, I mean, if you read the grievances themselves, they, they say that you guys are, you know, incompetent or malicious, that you violated this, right? So it doesn't make sense that you're incompetent enough to violate your own bylaws, but you are competent enough to, to uh, investigate it yourself. It's like a gap in logic. So send it to the regional thing and just be done with it. Um, but I want to bring up one point in Jonathan Tesler's uh, thing that I, I didn't really sit well with me. He, he says that board members were specific. This is a quote. Board members were specifically told that they should not, that they should vote for candidates who are not white males. And then he gives 
evidence. He 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 quotes or uh, he quotes the board member and and says that there's evidence of this, and there isn't. Basically, all of this board member said is, "Hey, this board doesn't represent the community. It it, it doesn't represent the community that it that it uh, shows, and it should. There should be more diversity on it, right? That's all that was said. Um, and as a white male, I'm I can I can pre I can safely say that we're not oppressed, right? We're not we're not an oppressed group. We don't need we don't need saving. Um, and really, anyone who thinks that is just a fragile white supremacist loser. Frankly, like it's it's not a question that there needs to be more diversity. So to reiterate, I know my time's up. Sorry, we we <clears throat> agreed that we would just have to cut people off, and I hate to do that. But that is how it works. Um, Zach, your mic is now live. You can unmute yourself and begin speaking. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. These grievances are a total sham, and everyone knows it. There's nothing more than an attempt to reverse the results of an election some of you didn't like. It's a shame we don't know what you were all saying behind the scenes with the people who made these grievances because Ken has not yet filled my CPRA. Two were filed by Boulder Gate co-conspirators, Byla and Lori, who got angry at Olga for blowing the whistle on their sadistic and illegal operation, which, by the way, was the responsible thing for Olga to do. The third was filed by a sour grapes candidate who lost and then whined about being an oppressed white male, which is pitiful. He's found his way onto this board anyway, so I don't see what his malfunction is. Byla Rahm, who during the election meeting, uh, meeting called Olga a dangerous leftist has already given away why she filed the complaint. She doesn't agree with Olga's politics and wants someone more right wing like her on the, in the spot. Lori, uh, I'm sure has the same objections and she lied on her grievance form by not mentioning she was on the public safety slash Boulder committee. It's outrageous that none of the board members involved in Boulder Gate like Terry Gomes have had been disciplined by the board, but here we are in bogus grievances for Olga who won an election fairly as you set up the rules. It's abundantly clear Olga will not get a fair hearing from this board. I don't think any of you would dispute that. You have no choice but to send these to the regional panel. And just so you know, one of the scenarios in which the city will not defend NC board members from civil litigation is in cases where a vote is taken to remove another board member as retaliation, which is, as we all know, what this is. So please vote to send it to the regional board and save yourself. I yield my time. Thank you, Zach. Um, Jackie Bloom, your mic is now live. You can unmute yourself and begin speaking. I can't help but um, you know, align myself with the first two callers. I think out of these three, um, you know, there's an opportunity to still withdraw formally. You know, Mr. Tesla, you know, the first caller was was kind of on, on the point here, you know, you, you wrote in your grievance that um, basically you look like a sore loser and you wrote in your grievance that you were not, um, you were fortunate enough to get a seat fair and square, ideally. Um, and so I'm surprised that you haven't actually, uh, that you're on the board taking the step to withdraw your grievance and move forward because you have a place that's there. You know, uh, beyond that, you know, the fact that you even cited a board member's requests to highlight lack of uh, lack of representation or lack of diversity as uh, oppression to you just shows completely how sort of out of touch you may be. And it is concerning now as you being a newer board member um, that we now have something to sort of follow and see and see what comes out of you. Um, you told on yourself there. Um, Byla, again, your submission was what I saw to be predetermined boilerplate copy. I'm not sure who helped you write that or what the sort of conspiracy there is, but out of the out of the three, the most sort of discrediting for you is is, is allowing Laurie Levine, who is a well known, unhinged racist, proud of it, um, to sort of anchor these three grievances. You know, I think, you know, if Mr. Tesla were to withdraw his, you know, bylaws might stand just formally, unbiasedly on its own, but Laurie is not going to provide any weight to this. So. I think, listen, we have enough delusional people in this country who are currently fighting a, a willfully won and correctly run election. And some of these, the commentary in these grievances looks like what Rudy Giuliani had next to him this week, okay? So um, do a better job completely. Um, 
if anything, you know, you guys aren't basically qualified or had proof of credibility that you're able to actually run your election smoothly enough. You're not able to. Thank you, Jackie. Um, Albert, your mic is now live. You can uh, unmute yourself and begin speaking. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Albert. I'm the Assistant Secretary over at the Silver Lake Neighborhood Council. I'm calling in just to echo everyone's sentiment. These grievances are thinly veiled at retaliatory act in response to uh, election results that people weren't satisfied with. You know, in the grievances themselves, they are citing uh, bylaws, which uh, right now, as Jonathan Tensler, as people have said, is a standing board member and in the spirit of the bylaws should should have rescinded his, uh, his grievance at this point. Uh, in addition, there are comments in his grievance that I find incredibly uh, uh, concerning re regarding the, the interpretation of discrimination. Uh, the comments that are cited there are inclusive uh, measures. You know, if, 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 if your neighborhood council or these committees don't represent the people you serve and you perceive that the comments in, in um, support of inclusivity as discrimination, then you are unfit to serve this board. Um, in addition, the other grievances sort of in, sort of in the same line are um, politically charged and retaliatory. Um, and I don't believe that the CPRA requests have been uh, followed through. So I don't know if this board is fit to um, follow these grievances through. And I believe all of these should be rescinded. If they're not, then I think an impartial party should be should be following up with this review, review process. But aside from that, um, I think to take this any more seriously into consideration is embarrassing. Uh, and I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, question to our board. If I put the phone here, is it, is it blocking? Is it blocked by my name or is it the other side? It's on the opposite side, correct? On my screen, it's on, it shows it on the right side, okay. Good. It is okay. showing Just, correctly if you go to the far corner like if, this. If I, if, I go, if I go over here, is it is it is it is it behind it's my over name? your name? No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go, good. That's there is there is good. Just making sure. All right. Um, Bianca, your mic is now live. Feel free to unmute yourself and begin speaking. Can you hear me? Hey. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, great. Hi, um, everyone. For those who don't know me or don't remember me, my name is Bianca. I was on this board for a year until I moved this summer. Um, because of my institutional knowledge and devotion to this community, I wanted to bring up a few things, uh, especially in the bylaws. First of all, Article 5, Section 9 is the removal policy, which says that a board member shall not be subject to removal unless the member has been censured at least once. Olga has been here for about a month or two, and I don't think has been censured yet, given that there hasn't been time. Um, not something we can consider. Number two, the grievances ask for extremely harsh penalties. All of them call for removal when there are better options available there. You could request corrective action for this election that was apparently erroneously conducted. You could suspend the member, but the fact that all three, again, jumped to removal seems to be very retaliatory like other callers have mentioned. And lastly, just to use my institutional knowledge um, and not to cherry pick and not to point fingers, but just an example I can think of off the top of my head. In my time on board, Susan Borden came to approximately one board meeting um, in our bylaws, the other um, attendance section says that any board member who misses five meetings during the fiscal year should be removed. Why then, Jonathan, Byla, Lori, everyone, is there no call for her to be removed? Why are we selectively picking which bylaws to enforce? Um, thanks. Yield my time. Nice to see everybody. Thank you, Bianca. Um, Nikki? Your mic is now live. You can unmute yourself and begin speaking. Unmute. Sure. Can you can you hear me, folks? Yes. Go ahead. Great. My name is Nikki. I'm a neighborhood organizer. These grievances are politically motivated and anti-democratic. This board is a nonpartisan body and meant to represent the residents of Soro, and these grievances do not do that. Likewise, they would not change the outcome of the board's votes. They are motivated retaliation against Olga for Bouldergate. The fact that members formerly on this board and some current members spent thousands of dollars to hurt our unhoused residents is just shameful. Terry Gomes hasn't been disciplined by this board for Bouldergate, and that is unacceptable. One of the grievances was filed by Jonathan Tesler, and it is now moot. Jonathan, you have a seat. Why are you making up fake bylaw grievances when you won already? I'm calling on you to personally retract your grievance. I have a question for the board. What are you here for? 
Is it to help people or is it to make the lives of Sora residents harder? Who is this board for? Send these grievances to the regional panel, vote to send them to the regional panel. I yield my time. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Nikki. Patty, your mic is now live. You can unmute yourself and begin speaking. Yeah, hi. Um, so as I mentioned to you last week, um, you know, I'm kind of new on this. So I had to read back a lot of different things, uh, a lot of past minutes and information. And from what I can see, it looks like, you know, Jonathan came in second and reading the grievance, it's kind of a whole bunch of whiny, I should have won, I should have won, um, which sounds a lot like uh, somebody in the White House right now. But yet he got filled on the very next vacancy. So uh, we now have a sitting board member filing a grievance about a past election he lost and he's on the board now and he's not you know, retracting this grievance, which is really ridiculous. And it's interesting because I, in Googling some names, uh, saw a lot of connections and I agree with all the previous callers. It's absolutely retaliatory uh, about Olga bringing up the whole thing about the boulders under the bridge. Um, a lot of deep connections. It's ridiculous I, to unseat somebody on a technicality that wouldn't have changed the outcome. It's just really, it is retaliatory. It's ridiculous. I really encourage you. Well, first of all, Jonathan Tesla, I encourage you to retract the grievance. But next, I encourage the board to send it to an outside uh, rack to review it because I can't trust people within this board to review it fairly. It needs an outside opinion. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Carla? Yeah. Oh, Could on. you clarify for everybody in attendance that it's not us who will hear the grievance, but an outside panel of non-board members? Sure. We, the, the way the internal method works is that we ask for volunteers to join the, the panel of st the stakeholders can volunteer to join the panel, um, at which point we at random pick five board members I'm sorry, pick five people who had volunteered their names into the hat to, to, uh, to sit on a committee and discuss together with the secretary, that would be Gloria, and the parliamentarian, that would be Ken, to decide what to, uh, how to address these uh, comments, or these grievances rather. Um, further, to be further clear, all of these grievances I believe came in, um, I know that I mentioned Jonathan's, all of Jonathan's have come in prior to his, his joining the board, or Jonathan's grievance was, was filed prior to joining the board, just to be clear. Um, we have two more people left. Jackie, I see your hands up again. Unfortunately, we only allow somebody to, I'm sorry, three more people left. Jackie, we only allow somebody to speak once during general, uh, during public comment for these topics. So um, with that being said, Bela, your mic is now live. You have two minutes from when you begin speaking. Go ahead. Hi, Go ahead. this is Bela. Um, first of all, I want to say that I never have had a bad word to say about Olga. I'm very impressed about the work she does on the board. I know you're making a face at that, Olga, but I didn't know you before this. I didn't know you at the election. I've seen you do um, speak very well at the board meetings. I never said anything you'd be uh, negative about you at all. So I don't know where that person got that from. I had nothing to do with boulders under the bridge. And it really is sickening to people drag me into that when I had nothing to do with it. There's no proof I had anything to do with it. So I would really appreciate um, anyone who's going to consider, continue to slander me to come and speak to me personally. Um, also, someone said that I was, someone had to help me write that. I have a master's degree. I don't need help writing. I'm actually a writer. Um, and what was the other thing? Can't read my notes. Anyway. Um, I, I just really think that the, this board has a lot of um, issues in the way that it handles things. Um, I'm not on the board, but I've seen a lot of questionable um, things happen under this board. And I would really, I was really disappointed when they changed the uh, made a standing rule when it was um, 
obviously not part of the bylaws, which your parliamentarian and vice president, Ken Blaker, pointed out clearly before you made this decision. It's unfortunate that Olga is caught up in this, and I really do hope that if she if she does not, if she's not able to keep this seat, that she would run in June and that she joins the board another time. Over. Thank you, Bela. Uh, Lori, your mic is now live. You have two minutes when you begin speaking. Hello. Um, wow. That's really all I can say after hearing all of these people. Of course, I don't want Olga on the board. I have no problem saying that. There's nothing political about it. In my eyes, she did not win the election. She didn't even make it to the second round and somehow she went on. The other thing is I was there and I also heard somebody say, we don't need another white man, blah, blah, blah. So the other thing I, I notice is interesting is you know, Olga's got a great social media campaign going behind her. She has no problem stacking these meetings with people to call and back her. I'm not interested in that. You people say, I'm not a typical stakeholder that represents South Robertson. That's BS. Another thing, Miss Jackie Bloom, who you don't even know me, unhinged racist. I hope you have an attorney. That's all I'm going to say. I hope you can back that. The bottom line is I've lived in my neighborhood for 60 years. You know what? I'm going to make it a better neighborhood. My idea of better and your idea of better differ. And you know what? I would never support a politician who doesn't want to allow me the freedom of the rights to do what I want with my body. So why would I want to support Olga leaving people on the streets? That to me is not a solution. That's not what a homeless advocate is. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Um, our last comment is from LT. Your mic is now live. You can unmute yourself and begin speaking. Hi, everyone. I'm Linda Tung, a previous oh. board member. Hi. Um, I just wanted to um, make a quick comment. Um, again, kind of echoing what Bianca was saying about institutional knowledge. Um, in my I think it was like three or three years on the board, maybe four years on the board. Um, Lori and Bela are recurring characters. Um, and in my experience, I believe that their public comment, their uh, nimbyism has stymied a lot of the good work that this board can do. Um, you know, and, the, and, and, you know, Lori was saying that this wasn't politically motivated, not liking someone because of their uh, positions is something that is politically motivated. Um, in the brief time that Olga and I intersected on this board pr just over the summer, um, I've seen nothing but dedication from her. She's an incredible asset to the board, regardless of whether you, you agree with um, her positions. Um, this board is incredibly lucky to have her. Um, I don't, you know, I uh, just like the others uh, said, um, this, uh, these grievances should not be reviewed by the board uh, that has, you know, a member and other members in their committees who um, might be biased. Um, and since I was the person who was quoted in Jonathan Tesler's grievance about advocating for more um, representation of the neighborhood on this board, I just want to say that some of my, I, I didn't say anything bad about white people. I didn't say anything derogatory. I didn't discriminate against white people because some of my closest friends are white people. Some of my best friends are white people. And in fact, many of them are really articulate. Not the last one though. So that's all. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. All right, seeing no more public comment on this issue, I will open it up to um, board debates. Would anybody like to move? I guess we, we technically speaking, we're gonna have to take each one individually to vote on. We're not doing it. Um, and as such, I'm gonna move. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Okay, that's what's going to happen. Before we do that. Obviously, we got to move each one individually or as a package? We, we do have to move each one individually. Okay, thank you. Um, I will start. I will move uh, grievance to number 251 to be referred to the regional grievance panel. A second. 
Who was that? I didn't catch that. Who was that? Jared. And Jared, Jared's second. Thank you. Uh, Gloria, your hand is up. You can go first. Yes. Um, I, I think I have a technical question, and I think that's based upon a question that Barry asked a few minutes ago. Um, I thought that we had the option as the board to refer all of the items to the regional board, but instead I think I heard that you responded to Barry indicating that we would move this to an ad hoc com committee. So, so let, me, let me explain. The, 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 the two options that we have on these motions, mm -hmm. number one is that according to our bylaws, what, what, will, what would occur is um, we would take a, um, we would ask anybody who's interested to volunteer to join an ad hoc committee to discuss the grievances. It's an ad hoc grievance panel, so to speak. Um, that grievance panel, uh, the, it will be five stakeholders, non-board member stakeholders um, chosen at random. So if it's only five, obviously there's only five, but if there's you know, 10, you'll pick you know, five out of the 10 people to join that committee. Uh, that committee is run by or is joined by you as the secretary and Ken as the parliamentarian. The, um, so it's essentially seven person, some people on the committee, though I think the five stakeholders are the ones that make the decision um, and decide how to approach um, the topic. That's, that's one option. The second option is that it gets referred out to the regional grievance panel. Um, that is consists of members, each board, each NC has, has um, nominated a, a grievance panel member. So these three will go out to the grievance panel made up of um, other NCs from our area. And they sit there and look at the, the, they would look at the grievances, one, two or three of them, however many we send um, to decide whether or not um, they are valid um, and should be dealt with, should be cured or our moot or whatever it may be that they decide. So ultimately the decision is gonna be made by one of those groups. It's a matter of whether or not we want it to be the regional grievance panel, which is the recommendation of the motion I've made or the internal one where we ask board members, I'm sorry, we ask stakeholders to join that committee to make a decision. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, Mike, go ahead. Okay, um, probably would be a good idea if either you, Charlie, or Ken explained exactly what the grievance that done, or actually the process of what, um, you know, what, how the grievance went to Dunn and what Dunn decided as far as the grievance goes so people can understand better what we're dealing with here. Let me, talk, let me I'll, I'll go ahead and do that before you, and you can continue your speaking. Um, so the, if you'd like to submit a grievance, if you're, a pub, if you're pu any member really, a, a, public, uh, a public member or a member of this board, anybody can file a grievance. That grievance is filed directly with the, um, with Dunn. Dunn then looks at the grievance, sees if it is, um, they, they essentially they certify it to, ve to verify whether or not it isn't a proper grievance, whether there's a reason for the grievance to be filed and then sends it to us and says, um, these are the grievances that were filed. These are now certified, um, meaning they've gone through, at which point we have um, to put it on our next board meeting agenda to decide how we're going to address uh, the grievance moving forward. So in this case, the two, the three grievances were each were sent to us. They were all sent to us um, right before last week's meeting after the agenda had already been posted, if I remember correctly. Um, so we couldn't add them to last month's agenda. Um, so as such, they're on this month's and we have to make a determination as to what we're, what we'd like to do with them, refer them out or keep them in. Does that make sense, Mike? Or do you want more? More actually though, but specifically that it, it deals specifically with the bylaws and the violation of the bylaws. And it's not a removal of a board member. It's basically dealing with um, us violating the actual election of that seat itself. So it just, it's a technical thing just to keep in mind um, in terms of what the violation in the grievance it, grievances are. 
Um, Steve, your hand is up. You're muted. Here I am. I'm, I'm unmuted. Uh, hello, everyone. So, uh, you know, the outcome is going to be decided either locally and by this board or regionally. But I think that because we're going to work together, it's important that we all understand each other and see where each one is coming from. I see this maybe as an opportunity for, uh, for us to understand what the, what, the, what the actual character of each, each, each board member is. So here I go. I don't relate to myself as being part of a race. I really don't. I relate to myself as my identity is based on my principles and my beliefs. I don't relate to myself as being part of one race. I didn't grow up that way, so I don't really understand it, to be honest. I don't vote by identity. I don't vote for another person because they're a male or because they're Jewish like I or because they're short like I or whatever. That's not how I function. I don't work by identity politics, whether it's regionally, federally, on any level. That's not how I relate or vouch for vet or vet people out. So, yeah, I mean, I don't subscribe to the idea that it's inexcusable that something is mostly white or most, mostly purple. I don't subscribe to that, whether it's an infraction of a code of conduct on the board. I'm probably not the authority on that. But yeah, I don't subscribe to it. When I was told to vote for people that don't look that don't uh, necessarily look like me, I don't know. I feel it's a little it's a little patronizing, and I just don't relate to it, to be honest. So I accept it. I accept every comment, and I don't I don't take it personally. But I don't subscribe to it, and I just want you guys to know that. Um, I embrace and I celebrate diversity but I don't believe that it's a principle. I believe that diversity is the result of certain principles such as compassion, justice. There should not be injustice. There should not be discrimination. And when those principles are observed, then we get to a result that is called diversity. To try and work it the other way around, to attack it, like dealing with a symptom, to try to sort of, you know, uh, 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 suppress a symptom is not going to the root cause. I'm much more interested in speaking about justice and compassion than I am speaking about diversity, although I think that diversity is something that is a result of principles. I don't believe that it's a principle in itself. Sorry, just a quick point of order is that that part of Jonathan's thing was decertified by Dunn, so we're, we're not talking about that. I, I, you know, like I said, I think it's more important for us to understand each other and I'll get to, you know, I'll vote just like anybody else, but I think it's, it's important for us to understand each other because we're, you know, I, I believe that we all believe in, in, in justice and in compassion. I, I think that everybody at this board does. And so I'd rather bring it to, uh, to that denominator. And again, I just want you guys to know where I'm coming from and you can like me or not fine either way. Um, I'm, I'm in favor of letting uh, a regional body deal with this. I think, it's a, I think it's a good idea. I don't think that we want to get into a, to something where somebody has to be removed by other members because at the end of the day we all have to work together. So I think that I think that you know so I think that this is an opportunity for us to share uh, you know to, to to share our, our characters, I, I really see it as I really see it as that. And in terms of the vote, in terms of the of the bylaws, I'm not an expert on the bylaws, and I'm not an expert on the on the procedure. Forgive me for that. All I do know is that if we if we if we broke a procedure, then we should fix it. If we need to redo the vote, then we'll redo the vote. And if uh, if Olga is uh, is is reelected, great. Uh, there's no, I can say that I have no desire to get rid of anybody or to, but I just wanted to, I just wanted to share that with you. And in terms of what I believe to be principles and how I function, that I function based on principles and not based on identity. That's all. Thanks, Steve. Terry, your hands up. Go ahead. 
Uh, yes, sir. Um, I'm not sure where, I, I know there's a grievance policy by, by Dunn, but our bylaws are very clear on page 16 of what we're supposed to do. The secretary will refer this matter to the ad hoc grievance panel comprised of five non-board members. That is very clear. That is what's supposed to happen. It's not for the board to decide, oh, we want the regional, we want this, we want that. It's very clear in our bylaws what it says. Follow step one, they'll refer it. Then the secretary will coordinate a time and place for the panel to meet with the board parliamentarian. And then it goes into more. It isn't until step four in the event that a grievance cannot be resolved through the grievance process, then the matter may be referred. And that's when we then decide if we wanna to go to the, to the regional. That's what it actually says in our bylaws. And we didn't follow our bylaws before, and now we're here doing again, where you're giving different options that don't follow our bylaws. Okay. Um, to, to be clear as to, to that point, um, this, was a, this was sent to us by Dunn with these two options, as well as the um, Los Angeles Administration, Administrative Code 22.818 that discusses I understand, issue? That. I understand that, Charlie, but at the same time, it was their recommendation that got us into this issue. Uh, I, don't, I don't debate that, not, not one bit. I'm looking at our bylaws and they're very clear. The secretary will, it's nowhere clear than that. And then if they wanted us to put that part in our bylaws, which I have no problem doing, if that's how they want us to follow it, then they should have told us. Because like, just like with the change of age for voters, that's being put in there. The ele all the election stuff is being put in our bylaws. They tell us what needs to be codified in our bylaws. This is what we had. They know what our bylaws are because they reviewed them and had Bonk approve them. That's all I'm saying. You know, if we go, if we go with a regional, if this board wants to vote for a regional, then that's what we do, but it violates our bylaws again. Now, to, but to be clear, Terry, and yeah. this, 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 now this is a question, right? I'm reading, going back to the top, and it says, any grievance by a stakeholder must, any grievance by a stakeholder must be submitted in writing to the board secretary. Now, that is not the way Dunn operates, right? Because because we had, we had somebody attempt to submit a grievance to us, and we were specifically told, no, that's not right. You don't do it that way. So. In theory, our, this grievance was not a grievance through our bylaw system anyway. I mean, and I, and I hear your point, right? I, I get it. It does, it does say exactly what it says. They'll coordinate a time, the, the secretary coordinates a time and, and goes through this process. However, they've already forced us to veer from the bylaws process that they have approved, which is that, that it goes to us. And once, that, once the, the secretary gets it, it, it goes through an ad hoc grievance panel is set up. Dunn's process is you will submit to Dunn, Dunn certifies the grievance and tells you how to deal. So essentially, isn't this really a, a Dunn grievance as opposed to a, as opposed to a SORO and C grievance? I, I don't know, that's, a, that's really a proposed question because I don't really know the answer because- That's all, but that's all I'm bringing up is what our bylaws say and are we going to be violating again or do we have to go back and redo that section to codify what they want to have in it. Because when we were doing our bylaws, I was on that committee and they didn't tell us that that whole section needed to be changed. Right. And that was never given by Freddie. Nothing was ever sent to us. Because we changed everything that needed to be changed per the bonk policies. Um, John, your hand is up, go ahead. John, you're, you're muted. muted. You're muted. Oh. Nope, you're muted again. Okay. Go ahead. Let's ask a technical question, but before I get to that, I, I just want to respond to Terry because it's quite evident that our bylaws were written before Bonk changed, Bonk and Dunn changed the policies on us. Uh, I agree with that, what our bylaws say or what our bylaws say, but that's not how the real world is, is operating. So let's at least stop the madness at this point and, and try to figure out what we can do 
to resolve the issue. Now, my understanding of this, and this is a technical question for you, Charlie, is that these three grievances are not grievances against Olga. They are grievances against the board as an entirety, saying that the board has taken actions or done things that were wrong. And that what is being looked at is whether the board's actions are correct or incorrect. And if they're incorrect, whether the aggrieved party's suggested remedy is appropriate or inappropriate. Right. So if my, if my assumption that that is really what the technical issues are, mm -hmm. then I think we can get a lot of the heat out of this discussion. Because Olga, you've done very little that has been anything other than excellent. You're a hard worker, you do a good job. I agree with you maybe 22 and a half percent of the time, but that's okay. I celebrate diversity. Uh, and I think we as a council would be better off if we found a way to look towards finding inclusivity rather than exclusivity. So anyway, Charlie, that was my question of you. Um, I'm looking at the, the, the grievance panel, this, this, this admin, admin code was signed into law in January of 2015. Now, I've also been on the bylaws committee since I joined, which if I remember correctly is now 20, well, 2016, I joined, I joined in 2016. Um, I don't think this issue has ever come up, um, but I also don't think we've changed anything bylaws related in terms of this, in terms of the grievance process since then. So in theory, and I don't know if this is accurate, but I believe the law would over, if the law is not in, um, with, the with, with, with our bylaws, I believe the law would apply. I agree. Correct. Um, and I also think that the object of the complaint is not Olga, but the Soro NC board. Correct. It is. Um, to be clear, we definitely violated the bylaw. We did. I mean, there, there's really no question on that, on that issue. We did. We passed a standing rule that we followed and the vote took place based on the standing rule. Now, had the standing rule not passed, I don't think it would have changed the outcome. I think the outcome would have been what it was, but that's not the question at hand. You know, ultimately we passed the standing rule, we followed a standing rule rather than the bylaw and it passed. Now the question at this point is how do we address the issue? And that's really what the grievance panel is gonna to have to decide. How do they think we should address these issues to go through? Does that require us to do new training? Does that require us to vacate the seats? and have a new vote, I don't know the answer. And so for that reason, it might be better, which I think is what has been proposed by a lot of people here, to send it out to a regional so we're not overly involved, not to mention the code is passed and says that. Olga, you're up, go ahead. I just had a clarity question because I was not here when the bylaws were written, but I thought Bonk dictated fairly universal bylaws to a lot of the neighborhood councils, like certain aspects of the bylaws. And that is what Dunn enforces. Like Dunn does not enforce our bylaws. So I, that was my understanding. And if, if that's the case, I'm just curious why the bylaws weren't changed to this system. I don't have an answer. I, I, think that, I, think in, I, I think this was I think this was in place well before they, they were drafted well before and when when Bonk changes things some of them make recommendations to include them like they did like Terry was talking about with the voting age and that kind of stuff and sometimes like in this one I don't think they ever did maybe we should maybe we should change our bylaws to decide in compliance with what the law now says we did not do that we have not yet done that and I think at this point, our bylaws are locked until after the next election. So it's not like we can touch them at right now anyways. All right, um, Gloria, you're up. Uh, you're, uh, oh. Charlie, just one quick second though. Didn't Freddie just say that we had to change our bylaws and vote on it? We have, to, rat we have to ratify what, it's not even change, it's ratify what Bonk's done to our new bylaws. That we means changing our bylaws. That's exactly oh, what Hold on, means. hold on. Freddie's got his hand up, so put it here. Hold on, I'm gonna promote you to panelists so you can chime in here since these are all bios related questions. Go ahead, Freddie, if you've got a, a response. 
Feel free. Hello. Yes. Um, so uh, the the changes uh, to the bylaws were made in response to two ordinances that were passed by City Council, um, and that was under Council File um, eighteen dash um, zero four six seven, if I remember correctly. Um, anyway, uh, for 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 that. Um, uh, those were uh, standardized language on the uniform age and also the um, stakeholder definition uh, that the city uh, city council um, amended um, as because there were amendments to the admin code, which required uniform language amongst all neighborhood councils. So we were required to make those changes. Um, the additional changes that happened in the same year, um, but were not uh, admin code by city council were the censure and removal policy and the leadership orientation policy. Those three policies were bonk policies that enacted also a uniform, uh, a uniform language amongst all neighborhood council bylaws. So there were two different instances of bylaw changes. The first one, which was censure and removal and leadership orientation policy occurred within the time window um, of June, by June 5th of 2020, which was the last date, extended date of when the window for bylaw changes were open. And then the second change in bylaws was the two ordinances, which happened during the moratorium of the uh, bylaw amendment. After election year, uh, after the elections are over, uh, bylaws will, uh, amendments will open up again. Uh, our department will be providing forms for that and the window of when it opens and closes again. Thanks, Freddie. Uh, Gloria, your hands up, go ahead. Sure, um, it's my opinion that we should refer the, these three items to the regional board. Um, um, well, a couple months ago as a team, we agreed to modify the bylaws in order to make this issue more expedient. And so while I understand it didn't perfectly align to the bylaws, we should leave things as is unless we refer the issue to the regional board to, um, to solve. Over the last few months also, we've seen on several occasions that the community has had to come out and question our motives um, and if we decide to vote on this issue ourselves, it's going to create more and more questions. You want a board and you want a community who trust the decisions that come out of the board. And I think by voting on this, it's just going to create more problems for us. Thanks. Okay. Uh, yeah, first of all, I'll, I'll, I, I also agree that we should... Uh, uh, send these to the uh, to the regional uh, um, grievance uh, uh, committee rather than uh, than form a local one. Um, the um, I, I and I think that uh, John characterized some things well. I just want to point out um, grievances are not against uh, individuals or against uh, certainly not against Olga, not against anybody in particular here. Um, it's against the board itself. And uh, the grievance is against the board because we violated our bylaws. Uh, there's really no question that we did that. Uh, I was the one who spoke against doing that when we did it, uh, before we did it. And um, uh, anyway, it's. Uh, I think this is all technical, but I think it it, it stands not as a rebuke of uh, of Olga, but above of the board itself that we have to be more conscious. I think uh, to Terence's uh, uh, point about the fact that in referring to the regional um, um, grievance uh, uh, group, we will not be following our bylaws. That's true, but uh, just like um, state law trumps city law, uh, federal law trumps state law, uh, the administrative law uh, trumps our bylaws. And uh, I think that's, that's an intrinsic uh, flaw or, or goes to some intrinsic flaws in the way this whole system works. But when the, the, um, when the uh, neighborhood councils were set up, they were set up 
to be under the administrative uh, regulations of Bunk. Uh, that was, um, you know, that's 20 some years ago, I think at this point, and that hasn't changed. So I think um, uh, the fact that nobody brought this to our attention and we didn't focus on this at the time that we made our most recent bylaws change is just that we didn't know. Uh, it was ignorance on our part. And until we faced this situation, uh, we didn't realize that there were going to be two options. So anyway, with that said, uh, I do think we should go with the regional. Robbie? I just looked over the, I took a close read of the bylaws as well. And it seems to me that it's in our hands to correct this because if we go through the process, there's been a lot of talk and of an understanding that this grievance process is about procedural uh, disputes. And, and yes, it'll involve an ad hoc committee who then kick it back to the committees. There's been a ton of talk of us wanting to unite each other and work together to figure this out. The hard work will happen in the committees and the committee's recommendations could be the solution. And if, if this goes back to us as and the committee members and we come up with a formula that'll fix this process, then we as a board can take that into consideration and move forward. Because if we if we do kick this out to a regional um, body, I feel like we're gonna be faced with another grievance complaint that we violated our bylaws. And so um, because I think we could still solve this internally um, by having the committees propose a good solution on a procedural problem, um, we could just handle this ourselves. Um, but I'm also, I understand if, if somebody has a counter to this point uh, of needing to, to go outside, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'd support that and I could be convinced, but otherwise I don't think there's a conflict with the committees proposing a good solution for the board to adopt. Olga? Yeah, I, I just want to chime in since a lot of people keep trying to say this is a grievance against the board and not me specifically. Um, just want to add that for a lot of you who weren't there, uh, I'm the one whose personal information was leaked by members of the board to the very people who are filing these grievances against me. Um, if I asked right now, Terry, how many people have you already spoken to who would do the ad hoc committee? Zero. Zero, for sure. Cool. For sure. I've been too busy working 14 hours a day. Mm -hmm, for sure. So yeah, I all this is going to be is a popularity contest between who can get most of their friends to come out. I don't personally see that as uniting any board. Um, this is very much a referendum about me. I don't think I would come up in the complaints themselves if it weren't. Um, I, I really, any effort to make this seem like a neutral issue is really just completely glossing over the last three months of history of this board. And um, it's, it's really troubling that anybody thinks that we can handle this neutrally in-house um, when, again, we, we haven't really handled any aspect of this whole situation in-house. Um, so we had what six people have quit in the last few months um four people directly as a result of the boulder situation i i really do not as somebody who lives here i do not trust this board to make a decision on this that is even remotely impartial or about the bylaws um it seems like the bylaws are being used here to just obscure personal political agendas um I I feel like I, somebody's just telling me I'm crazy when I point this out, but just to put it out there, none of this is like neutral and about the bylaws. We, okay, we violated the bylaws. The idea that holding an election to fix the bylaws to give Jonathan a second chance to get reelected makes no sense. Um, <laughs> It's weird that somebody on this board who filed a grievance would even be voting on this. Like it's, this whole thing is absolutely, nobody on this board is impartial on this issue. So that's all I have to say about it, thanks. Guys, I'm just gonna make a quick pointer. It's 8.40 and we have a, a list of items. We've gotta get through three of these votes and then the rest of the items on the agenda. Um, I'm gonna let the three people that have their hands out speak, but please make it quick. Mike, you're up. Okay, um, 
need to be very clear that the ad hoc committee would be non-board members. So, and drawn at random. So that, that's something to be very, very, very clear about. And that their recommendation would come back, you know, to the board. And if the board at that point wanted to, didn't agree with that or wanted to forward it over to, uh, you know, the outside panel, we can. But either way, it's an outside panel of people that are going to be deciding this, are going to be making the recommendation and we are going to be the ones deciding it, even if it's an outside panel based on, on their rules. So that's one. Uh, two, uh, the undoing of the, uh, no, no, you know what, screw it. That's good. I'm good. Crystal? I'd like to call the question. Anybody opposed? I just have one point real quick, a very quick okay. one. As I'm doing a research into this and looking at it, we need to update the site for the board meeting because the minutes for the September meeting are not posted. In fact, they're posted as the agenda for October and there are no minutes for October either. So it just it was difficult to go back and try to look at what exactly the votes were and to figure this out. And I'm sure the public is feeling that too. So we should probably update that as well as the Zoom say, recording say, tracker. Say that one more time. The Zoom recording tracker is not, it was posted by our prior president. We don't update that. And we were told not to update it for any further. With that, we said, Noted. You said okay. So you said the, which, which point I, I can, I'll tell you what. I'll email all, you all the, all, yeah, please do all the minutes. I'll, I'll update them all through the website later this week. Um, yeah. I think call the question, which yes, means no further debate. Yeah. We can vote on the call the question and then all right. continue or not continue. Is anybody opposed to calling the question? You have to take a vote there, Charlie. Uh, not not if we just if nobody opposes it, in which case it's a consent vote to that point, is it not? No, we're on it's Zoom. Not you have to do a bit. You Charlie, have to do a vote. I've had my hand raised. I'd like to say something really quickly, please. Unfortunately, that's unfortunately the vote. Go ahead, Gloria. Okay, take a vote on calling the question. Okay, Gary. This is not on, on vote. This is just to decide that we're going to vote on this motion. A yes means to end the debate and take a vote. Okay, Gary. He's gone. Oh, I think he's gone. Okay. Um, Sophia. No. Ken. No, I, I, it's unfair to Richard. Olga. Yes. Crystal. Yes. Uh, Chevy's not here. Okay, Barry? Yes. Jonathan Tesla? Yes. Susan, I think she's not here. Terry? I agree with uh, Ken. It's unfair to Richard. He needs to speak. No. David? He's not here. Um, Dan? is not here. Paul is not here. Charlie? Yes. Richard Bloom? No. Okay, Jonathan Brand is not here. Um, Jared? Yes. Brian Warman? Only for Richard, no. Michael? No. John? I hate to say this because it make, this is going to make me another one of these old white men, but no. Gloria, yes. Dina is not here. Robbie is. No. Rob, what did you say, Robbie? No. No. Okay. Steve, you're still here? No. I'm here, yes, but I'm voting no. Yes. <laughs> and Gideon is not here. So, Basically, of uh, the 25, seven, yes, nine, no. Go ahead, Richard. Thank you. Um, it, I will be quick, I'm mindful of the time, uh, but I do think that uh, when we have people speaking and there's very few remaining, it's not appropriate to have a motion to cut the remaining people off. But having said that, I will be very quick um, in you know, my perception, and that is that we went through a very turbulent time. Uh, and during that period, 
Uh, there weren't just grievances filed. Uh, there was uh, questioning of the uh, actions of our board. There were news reports. There were accusations of uh, people being involved in things that they weren't involved in. There was a, lo a lot of problems. Fortunately, having said that, I think things have uh, improved. And you know, we've reverted back to the smoother functioning that existed prior to that short period during which the turbulence occurred. But because we had people uh, questioning our actions, even though we can handle it more internally than externally, there's an appearance of impropriety. There's an appearance of a conflict. There may not be an actual conflict. And I'm not suggesting that there was impropriety, but with regard to determining who should uh, be involved in evaluating the actions of our uh, board, we should allow an external uh, group, the uh, uh, grievance panel handle it, rather than it being handled internally because Otherwise, we are setting ourselves up to similar accusations to those that have been leveled against us. And that is that we're continuing to act inappropriately. We shouldn't be the uh, fox guarding the hen house, evaluating our own actions. These are grievances, as has been pointed out, uh, against the board. Uh, and with regard to determining the, the uh, proper disposition with respect to those grievances, we should allow as external a uh, entity as possible handle it so that we remain as removed uh, from the process as we can and then uh, hear the uh, uh, disposition of the uh, evaluation so that we can move on and uh, continue to operate in a smooth way rather than uh, returning to the turbulence that existed. Glory, go ahead, time to take a vote on the motion itself. The motion is to send it to the regional grievance panel. Okay, um, Gary. Not here. Gary's still not here. Okay. Um, Sophia. Yes. Ken. Yes. Olga. To send to a regional panel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Crystal. Yes. Chevy's not here. Uh, Barry? Yes. Uh, Jonathan Tesla? Tesla. What you said? Abstain. Sorry, I, I'm sorry. He said, I, he said he abstain. abstain. He abstained. Oh, abstain. Okay. Susan's not here. Um, Terry? Abstain. Abstain. Okay. David's not here. Dan's not here. Paula's not here. Charlie? Yes. Richard? Yes. Okay. Um, Jonathan, you're not here. Okay. Um, Jared? Yes. Brian? Yes. Michael? Epstein. John? Yes. Gloria, yes. Dina is not here. Robbie? No. S Steve? The grievance in question is the uh, electoral bylaw. One, it's grievance number 251. Forgive me, I'm not looking at it, it's not in front of my eyes. They're, they're all bylaw related grievances. But is it because of the is it because of the is the, 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 the procedure of the election? I apologize. Is, is, yes. is that what yes. you're talking about? That is. Yes. 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 Okay, and Gideon's not here. So basically 12 yeses, one no. Is that several? Hold on. Great. I think I have more than one no. Yeah, only no from Robbie. Okay, sorry, I was questioning myself, but I guess I had a lot of abstains. I had 12 yeses, one no, three abstain. Okay, uh, I move to send grievance number 257 to the regional grievance panel. Second. I got John as a second. That's John Lehrman. Um, I'm gonna 
has to be voted on this one as well because everybody's spoken on all of them so far. Um, just to be clear, Rich, had we voted on that one, you would have had a chance to speak right now anyways, even if we had closed debate. Um, go ahead, Gloria. Let's vote on this one too. Oh, wait, pardon me. We have a public comment. It's a different motion. So, Patty, go ahead. Your mic is live. Yeah, um, you know, I'm. <laughs> this is all crazy night. Uh, just the whole idea of removing a member because of bylaw violations, it just really seems to me that, you know, this long discussion, you really are opening up a Pandora's box of, you know, necessitating maybe a thorough evaluation of all your elected members. Um, you know, are you all willing to burn a house down just to get rid of one pest is what it really seems to me. And yes, unfortunately, Olga does seem to be caught in the middle of this, but I don't think people would be pushing so hard if it wasn't for her. You know, would this have been, let's say it was uh, Steve, would you all be pushing this hard? Probably not. So uh, just cause, uh, you know, keep in mind, I can get some friends and we can comb through the bylaws and pass meetings for violations as well too. So if this is how the grievance game is played at neighborhood councils, I'm getting a good education tonight, huh? Thanks. Thanks, buddy. Jackie, go ahead, your mic is live. I just wanna say it's very clear this is politically motivated. Um, you even had a person on record in public comment tonight who filed a grievance state clearly that she does not like Olga. And so I think um, moving it to a, a special committee and to a regional sort of review is, is the best case because what's gonna happen is that they're gonna hopefully be able to see these minutes and the rest of the minutes if you actually post them and um, the rest of the information that's being requested and, and truthfully literally compare and see that, um, that all of your time and all of our stakeholder time is being wasted um, on one, one that should be easily withdrawn by Mr. Tesler and two people who are completely unhinged and agenda driven and even what seems retaliatory um, this through. So respectfully, um, you guys go to the right way and, um, but you know, continue to discredit yourself by allowing um, some of the more unhinged people to, to affect your diplomacy and your democracy this way is absolutely wild. I think people want action and they want to move forward, but um, having people openly admit their agendas here um, in a debate we're talking about very, very politically is, is frustrating to see. Um, and that, you know, the fact that it's even being enter entertained by you guys in a, in a level that's down to your bylaws is even just, just absolutely more frustrating. So I yield whatever time I have left, but hopefully having someone with uh, some sort of professional ladder and done or bonk to review this will be more helpful. Thank you. Laurie, your hand is up. This is the last public comment of people who have their hands up. Hello, thank you. I wanna let most of the board members who have been around for a while know that I have forwarded you a post from Olga's Twitter where she puts out there that this is going to be discussed in this meeting and she's asking people to call in and defend her. I have told you honestly and openly what my agenda is. I've lived in this neighborhood forever. I don't want to see garbage on every fucking doorstep. I don't want people's packages stolen in your cars being broken in. I don't want homeless people living on the fucking street anymore. I have no problem saying that. But you know what? You've got a board member who stacks this meeting. What is her fucking agenda? That's number one. Number two, isn't everybody supposed to vote based on their political views? If somebody stands for something I don't believe in, why would I want to vote for them? That's number one. Number two, as John Lieberman and Ken both stated, this is really about the bylaws. It's unfortunate that Olga doesn't stand for anything that I believe in. I don't stand for anything she believes in. I truly would like to see the homeless people get off the street. I'm not sure these people who call themselves advocates 
but create more chaos. They love to bully people. <laughs> who is Jackie Bloom who's going to dig into all your lives? I'm not digging into all of Olga's lives. I'm looking what she's putting out there on social media. She's putting it out as public. Bottom line, I want somebody who really cares about this community, not someone who's going to go rally all their supposed homeless advocates that want to give out tents. Thank you, Lori. That exceeds your time. Um, I see it before. Friday, you want to chime in here because I want to clarify before I do. That was the only hand raised until that, that speech came and spoke, and we called it. That was the last comment. I now have two more comments that have since raised their hands. I'm inclined to say that that was the last little comment because that was what was called before. I don't see a problem with that. Am I accurate? And if anybody else wants to chime in here, I think I'm fine. Yeah, okay. Um, again, I will, I will, I move this and John seconded the motion. Do I have any board debates? Seeing none, Gloria, go ahead. If you'd like to vote on this one and then we'll talk about the third one. Okay, Gary, he's not here. Um, Sophia? Yes. Ken? Yes. Olga? Yes. Crystal? Yes. Okay, Chevy's not here. Um, Barry? Yes. Jonathan? Same. Susan's not here. Terrence? Same. Terry? Abstain? Yes, okay. ma'am. David's not here. Dan is not here. Paul is not here. Charlie? Yes. Richard? Yes. Okay. Jared? Yes. Jared? Okay. Brian? Warman? Brian? We didn't hear anything. You said, you said yes, Brian, but we didn't hear anything. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, the spreadsheet is covering the screen, so I can't see you, sorry. It's either sorry, or. Can you, can you hear me now? I yes. Said yes. Yes. So it's yes, right? Okay, sorry. Michael? Lynn? Sorry, I can't see you guys. I think Michael's backed out, Gloria. Oh, okay, so he missed the vote, okay. Uh, John? Yes. Gloria, yes. Dina is not here. Um, Robbie? No. No, okay. Steve? Yes. Gideon's not here. So therefore we have 12 yeses, one no, two abstains. Thank you. All right, the third, uh, that, one, that one passes well. Here's a grievance number 258. We'll start with public comment. If you'd like to make a public comment, please raise your hand now. There are eight people with their hands raised. I'm going to call on each of them. Um, I would like, well, I appreciate that we allow time for public comment. If you've already stated these comments, um, if you could please, we'd appreciate it given the time and the number of items on our agenda. Um, please be considerate of everybody's time. We are all volunteers here. Thank you. Re Renee Christophe, uh, your mic is now live. Go ahead, you have two minutes. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm also a member of a neighborhood council, and uh, that makes me also a volunteer, but I'm not under duress to be on a neighborhood council, and the fact that I'm a volunteer is irrelevant, right? I've stepped forward willingly to serve. That being said, I think everybody understands that Bonk and Dunn are feeling their way through with respect to bylaws. I personally have argued that Dunn doesn't do enough to make sure that the bylaws are fair. But when the grievance procedure is misused, um, I think that's, there's no shame in sending it to uh, a regional seemingly 
more, much more objective body to review it. Um, and this is how you grow. This is how you fix things and stop making mistakes. Any public official is going to be subjected to scrutiny by people who don't agree with them. And that's a misuse of the grievance procedure. But bylaws are tricky. And, you know, unless you're a lawyer trained in this stuff, it's we can all make mistakes. So the best course of action for everybody, I think, is to depersonalize it and send it to a much more neutral body. And then we can all join together to demand that Dunn give us more support. And that's all of my comments. And thank you for your work. I know it's not easy. Thank you. Um, Lori, go ahead. Your mic is not alive. Oh, no, I had already spoken last time. Okay. You just forgot to lower my hand. Sorry. I'll do that now. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have comments from Nigel, Jackie, Zach. Nikki, Patty, and Bianca. Those are the people with their hands raised. I will call on each of them individually. Nigel, you are now up. Uh, hi, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I won't take up too much time because I do appreciate that you guys have to move on to other stuff. Um, I just want to say, you know, now that we are on uh, Lori's grievance itself, I, I just think it's kind of telling how you know, angry and the, the vitriol she's spitting specifically at Olga. Come on, we know we know this is a personal attack. Um, it's a misuse of the grievance. She doesn't actually care about a small infraction of a bylaw. It's personal and you guys are doing the right thing by sending it to a regional thing and just not handling it yourself because it needs to be handled by an impartial party. Uh, that's it, that's all I have to say. Nigel. Jackie, go ahead. Um, oops, oh, you were up, but you just disappeared on me. Oh, there you are. All right, Jackie, your mic is live, go ahead. Charlie, I wanna speak specifically to this because of the commentary that Laurie shared. It again is loud and clear. Um, and I only know her from, from the neighborhood, from people who've been, um, who've been felt her terror, um, people of color, primarily, but that's beyond the point. But um, but it's important to have the, not just the grievance, but the misuse of grievances highlighted here and how much time your meeting, even as volunteers have been wasted on even having to surface these grievances and discuss them from people who are misusing the system, a system that is completely broken, a system between Freddie and Dun and & Bonk and even your guys' internal bylaws can't quite pinpoint just how things should go. Um, I wouldn't give it to Laurie of being intentionally trying to confuse you guys. Um, I don't think she has it in her, but I do think um, you know the misuse of grievances needs to be absolutely the showpiece here of how it affects the how it creates a barrier between the work you guys are trying to do um, and the people who are who are adding more paperwork and more procedural paperwork to 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 that. So. Um, great to continue to keep voting these through and have them outsourced to a party that's man able to manage it. Thank you. Zach, your mic is live. Yeah, thank you. I'll be really quick. Uh, glad you guys are doing the right thing here. Um, and I know a lot of people are dunking on, on Lori for her really <laughs> bizarre and venomous comments, but I actually want to thank her for giving um, really solid uh, audio evidence tonight of the fact that her grievance was completely politically motivated and a pers in, and personal in nature and had nothing to do with any sort of process issue. So thanks, Lori. Keep up the good work. I yield my time. Thank you, Zach. Nikki, your mic is now live. Go ahead. Yeah, just a quick note. I, I just wanted to express dissatisfaction with Lori's profanely laden comment. I want to remind everyone that this is a government meeting. You know, this isn't some sort of uh, pool hall. This is a, a government meeting and we should be civil. And I will be researching in the bylaws if profanity like that is against the bylaws. And, and we can we could be discussing that soon, too. Thank you. I yield my time. Thank you, Nikki. Patty, your mic is now live. Hey, 
Uh, Charlie, I'm not sure you even did a motion. You just went straight to public comment. It comes first, just to be clear. Okay. We, we talk about the comment first and the motion next. Okay, I thought it was the other way around. Uh, and by the way, you're doing a great job. But you know, keep in mind, we're also volunteers too. We're here because we care about our community. Not in the vile way that Lori cares about our community, but we do care about our community. And, um, you know, I kind of agree with everything that everyone else said, but I just want to, you know, Lori didn't even point out that she was on the public safety committee on her grievance form too. So I think that that kind of omission is a giant lie as well. And her tooling you guys around with a grievance is just, she admitted it tonight. Um, and she says she's putting everything out there in the public. Well, she is. And I Googled her name too. And I found she's calling the cops on people coming to the park. She willingly lives and chooses to live across the street from a public park and gets upset when people are there using a park. Come on. Parks are for birthday parties and weekends. And, you know, what's up with this private codes for the bathroom at the park? Why can't people use the bathrooms? Does Lori have the private codes? Why is it locked like that? Something's going on fishy there too, Lori. So we're coming after you. I'm getting with all these other people on the calls tonight. So there. Thank you, Patty. And our last public comment is from Bianca. Go ahead, Bianca. Thanks. So I'm devastated that my path did not cross with Lori's when I lived here. But just for a quick week wrap from what I've seen from Lori tonight is that she's upset that the public calls into meetings. And when she's here at the meeting, she's happy to curse out members of the board. Um, I know everybody's keen on emphasizing that these are about the bylaws and the bylaws will be the bylaws and it's just procedural, but there are real people at the ends of each side of these grievances. And I hope that we remember that when we vote. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Um, I'm going to move this one that we should we should send this one to regional grievance panel as well. And I'm going to second it as well. Thank you, John. Gloria, your hands up. Do you want to comment or go just well? Well, about this and and the community comments, I would just like to say that we have a generational divide. I personally have no issues if. Olga or anyone else on the board places a notice or makes a tweet regarding having community members, you know, attend this meeting and voice their opinion. It's no diff, Twitter is no different to Nextdoor or Facebook. We should all feel free to use it in a healthy and productive way. We should not publish anyone's addresses. I think that's where we'd be bothering on something that's illegal and dangerous. But I see nothing wrong with Olga saying to the, the stakeholders of this community what's happening at the meeting tonight. John, your hands up. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add two things. I concur with what Gloria has said and from the brief time that I've known Olga, I suspect if someone had asked her that at the beginning of tonight's session, she would have admitted to it. I don't think she has a problem with saying what she does. Uh, she owns her own and is responsible for her own actions. Uh, having said that, I'd like to point out to the general public that Olga at the start of this, I think had a preference as to which way she wanted this issue to be resolved and uh, that the majority of the board is going along with her preference. Thank That's you. all I have to say. Thanks, I, I did, there needed to be a little bit of balance. Since Olga is the last one with her hand up, or you took her hand out. No, all right, let's just vote. Go ahead, Gloria. Okay, Gary's gone, right? Sophia? Yes. Ken? Yes. Olga? Yes. Crystal? Yes. Sherry's not here. Barry? Yes. Uh, Jonathan? Dane. Uh, Susan's not here. Uh, Terry? 
Dane. Um, David's not here, and Dan's not here, and Paula's not here. Charlie? Yes. Richard? Yes. Okay, one second. Jared? Yes. Brian? Yes. Michael? Epstein. Oh, okay. Um, John? Yes. Gloria, yes. Um, Dina is not here. Um, Robbie? Robbie, we don't hear you. No. no. Okay. Steve? Steve. Sorry, yes. Okay. And Gideon's not here. So basically, we have 12 yeses, one no. Three abstains. Thank you. All right, the next item on our agenda is a motion to adopt the standing rule on submission of motions for board consideration. Um, essentially, uh, this rule is about having, uh, if we're proposing a CIS, that the CIS be written uh, or at least proposed in the packet in addition to the motion so that at least we can review the motion with the CIS together. Um, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, would anybody like to move it forward? I'll move it. John moves. And I, have second. I have a second from Mike, right? That was Mike. Second from Mike. Is there any board debate? Seeing none, Gloria, would you like to vote? Take the vote? Yep. Did somebody else say something? No. Was, okay. John moved, Mike seconded, time to vote. Okay, great. Gary is not here, I guess. Um, Sophia? Yes. Ken? Yes. Olga? Yes. Crystal? Yes. Chevy? Sherry's not here. Um, Barry? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Susan's not here. Terry? Terry, you're Barry? muted. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, David's not here. Dan's not here. Paul is not here. Charlie? Yes. Richard? Yes. Jonathan's not here. Brian? Yes. Michael? Yes. Okay, one moment. You skipped me, Gloria, but I'm a yes. And okay. Who, who did I miss? I just realized. John Lieberman. Oh, John Lieberman. Okay. Well, because I didn't get to you yet. Okay. Um, Gloria, yes. Uh, Dina is not here. Robbie. You're muted, Robbie. Nope. Nope. Sorry, Steve? no. I, I should clarify. I I missed what we're voting on. It's yeah, the no. it's the motion to have a CIS oh, yes. together. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Steve. Yes. Gideon's not here. There was someone who said that I missed him. It was not John. It was someone before John. It was Jared. It was Jared. Oh, Jared, okay. And what's your response, Jared? Yes, please. Okay, good. Excellent. And that's a 1600, correct? Yep, yep. Excellent. All right, the next motion on the agenda is an MPG for up to $5,000 to fund the Homey Made Meals program operated by EA Yikes. I believe the applicant is here. So we'll let him present. And I know there are a lot of questions from the last meeting. Um, for the point of clarity before we bring this one up, um, the, as you all can see, there are three MPGs on the agenda. Um, as I mentioned briefly earlier, the question as to whether or not um, these are properly on the agenda based on last week's executive committee, committee meeting. Um, I did get clarification today to answer the board member who asked about this. Um, I was told that our meeting agenda is proper and is acceptable. And for that reason, we will be allowed to vote on all three of them 
Um, John, what's our budget in terms for um, uh, for we, MPGs? We have a budget of ten thousand. It's either ten thousand one hundred or eleven thousand one hundred dollars, and I can get to the exact amount in a minute. It's on a piece of paper. That uh, account for the money that we've previously set aside for Soro Fest. We have ten thousand dollars set aside for Soro Fest, and the balance that is outstanding we have set aside for movies in the park. Now, we have not spent a ton of money. There is money that could be made available to follow these NPGs. Uh, and I'm not, I am not trying to judge any of the NPGs as to worthiness. I have very strong problems with process on all three of these applications as they now sit. And we'll cover that when we got to more debate. Can you okay. that at that time? Is Alex here? If you're here, Alex, can you raise your hand? I see an Alex with John, but I don't think it's you. Okay. You are. It is you. All right. Um, Alex, if you'd like to, Alex, I believe you're from EAX or um, Homemade Meals. Do you like to present? your NPG as what, you, what you're asking and answer any questions, um, yeah. feel free to go, go ahead and do so. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, my name is Alex. I represent Eikes um, and Polis Pantry. We're both uh, nonprofits that have made homey made meals when the pandemic hit. Um, really the, the goal of this project is to one, obviously feed our unhoused neighbors, but also to engage more people to get involved civically, much like many of you here are. Um, to date, since March 26th, um, when shelter in place happened, uh, we've served a little over 32,000 meals. And basically the way it works is people make meals at home. So all of you can make meals at home. And then we get people to drive and pick up and deliver to outreach groups. And so um, this NPG is to bring this service to the unhoused uh, community in Soro. Um, with donations from pantries um, and monetary donations from people who support um, feeding our unhoused neighbors. Um, we're able to get meals to be about a dollar a meal. Um, and so the $5,000 here would really help us to serve up to 5,000 meals and um, really help us to get like all the utensils, takeout containers, bags, um, and for people who, you know, socioeconomically don't have the means to make their own meals, um, we provide a free pantry for people to get dry pasta, to get tomato sauce, produce when it's available, snacks, water, et cetera. Are there any technical questions for Alex? Uh, Mike, yeah. Wait, wait, John, in order here. Uh, Mike, your hand is up, go ahead. Yeah, hi, Alex. Um, question. You said homemade food. Um, did you mean homemade food or did you mean it made in a commercial kitchen? It's homemade food. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, John. Uh, my technical question is I'd like you to give me some detail to the uh, connection between uh, Yikes and Covenant House and whether there are any board members uh, affiliated or associated with either group? Um, Covenant House is one of the partners who we deliver meals to. And so through the support of the various neighborhood councils in Hollywood, um, we were able to get funding to uh, provide meals to Covenant House. Um, so in a similar way, you would just substitute Covenant House with the Street Watch Soro chapter and they would be who we deliver our meals to, and they would be responsible for distribution. Second question, is there any affiliation with any board members, which would be either a real or apparent conflict? Yes, Olga is a part of the Street Watch um, organization. All right, um, I don't see any more technical questions. Oh, sorry, Sophia, go ahead. Just for clarity, um, the money is gonna be used to purchase ingredients? Yeah, supplies and ingredients. So again, like takeout containers, utensils, waters, um, pasta, snacks, et cetera. 
Um, I, have a, I have a technical question, Alex. If you were only approved for less than the full amount, would you then you just use make less meals? Is that essentially the? I'm only asking. We, we, like you heard, we've got a few on the agenda. I know there's more in our pipeline, so I'm trying to find out if you were to get say three thousand or rather than five thousand, you could still use it, just not as much. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, Rich, your hand is up. You have a technical question. Yeah. So, are you applying for any funding from any any of the other NCs? Yes, so I've got uh, just over 5,000 from the Hollywood NCs. Um, and um, besides NCs, this is the only other NC that we've applied to so far. Um, as we continue to distribute to other parts of the city and the county, um, the NC route, MPG seems like a promising route. And so, yeah, exploring a lot of different ways to get funding for this. I'm just wondering your application, and it may have been an oversight, but I just want clarification uh, where it's asked whether you have any current or former relationship with a board member. Why didn't you uh, identify Olga? Um, I don't have a, really a relationship with Olga. Um, Streetwatch informs us of uh, when they're expanding to different neighborhoods, and so MPGs um, I didn't know that she was a board member or anything like that. Okay, no, thank more, you. no more technical questions. Is there any public comment on this issue? No, I have, I will wait because I'm going to call on each of you individually. There are four people with their hands raised. Oh, sorry, five people. Nigel, Jamie, Patty, Renee, and I had Jackie, whose hand keeps going up and down. So I'm going to assume she's got it. So I'm going to ask Nigel, go ahead. You are first. Uh, hi. Yeah, uh, I think this is um, a great, a great use of your funds. Um, as we know, you know, food, getting food to our unhoused neighbors and our food insecure neighbors is important all the time. But especially now with COVID, so many people um, are finding it harder and harder to feed themselves and their families. So I think really anything this board can do to help alleviate that is a great idea. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. Uh, Jamie? I'm um, sorry. Jamie, your mic is now live. Hi, um, my name's Jamie York. I'm on the Reseda Neighborhood Council. So hi from the Valley. Um, just wanted to speak out in support of EA Yikes and the work that they're doing. Just a really fantastic service that uses money really efficiently to get healthy meals into the hands of the community. And I think that they're doing a really good job of using resources extremely efficiently and targeting folks who really do need help. So just wanted to testify to the good work that they're doing that I'm aware of. That's all. Um, Patty? Yeah, I'm also calling in support of um, Homey May Meals and EA Yikes um, with Polo's Pantry. Fantastic organization. I've done a lot of um, volunteer work with distributing the meals uh, with my sister out in Venice. And uh, I don't want to, you know, correct the speaker from EA Yikes, but all the meals that I've ever distributed from them have been coordinated from a commercial kitchen, from a, a restaurant who donated the meals. So uh, maybe the speaker representative can speak to that, but I think that that's part of the organization as well. So maybe that answers Michael Lynn's question that uh, they are made in commercial kitchens a lot of the times. I don't know about all of them, but all the ones I've ever distributed. And it's wonderful that it does come with everything, the utensils and water, a full meal, uh, as opposed to somebody just running by and handing out a granola bar. Um, it's nice to treat our unhoused brothers and sisters, you know, like guests. So, and that's what EA Yikes and Homey Main Meals does. So I urge you to support and give them the full amount for the MPG. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Patty. Uh, Renee, your mic is live, go ahead. Hi, my name is Rene Christophe, but um, I just want to say in support that uh, given these times and for the foreseeable future, feeding people is probably going to be the most important thing that neighborhood councils can do. I personally volunteer with uh, 
a food pantry on my side of town. And we see a fair number, not just of people who need the ready-made meals that we can prepare, but also the staples. These include not just our unhoused neighbors, but families with children. And uh, personally, um, I've been pushing my neighborhood council to give as much as we can to a variety, including things like Angel's uh, uh, Project, Angel's Food Project, and uh, St. Vincent's Meal on Wheels for our um, seniors who are shut in. Uh, whatever you can do to feed another human being is the best kind of work that we can do, and I urge you to pass this. Thank you, Renee Christophe. Uh... Oops. Jackie, you are the last comment. Go ahead. Thanks, Charlie. Um, I just want to say this is great. I think um, having tested it in Hollywood is very important. And I think coming and using NC as the sort of next sort of growth is extremely important. I think, you know, I was the one who asked to remove the homeless committee from the uh, consent calendar earlier because of the concerns I have with the um, sort of lack of compassion that homeless people have been treated with in this neighborhood. So I think until um, there's a precedent and there's a sort of a culture of being able to treat them compassionately and not through hostile means, including architecture, um, I think you have to rely on local mutual aid groups who are going to bridge that for you. So the more you can do in terms of investing and partnering with them who are on the streets in your neighborhood doing the work for you, the better foundation you have to be able to have uh, credibility and trust, in my opinion, to be able to properly address and um, and try to advocate correctly for homeless people. So I think that's great. And I think it's a great presentation and um, great job to Alex. That will conclude the uh, public comment. Would anybody like to move this forward? I believe that's it. I'll move it. Mike, I think Mike, I saw Mike's hand go up with, with a raise and I saw Brian with a second. Sorry, Barry. Um, Olga, your hand is up. Go ahead, you can go first. Um, so I, I just wanted to clarify, I, I don't have a prior relationship with Alex. Streetwatch is a really large organization and our Soro is kind of part of the West side. So I, I we don't work with the Hollywood Streetwatch people. Um, but with that said, um, I checked with the city attorney just to be safe. Uh, I don't have any kind of financial benefit from this work or anything like that. Uh, the city attorney said there was no conflict of interest, but all the same, I would like to abstain just because uh, obviously I, I volunteer with Street Watch. Thanks, so. Thanks, Olga. Mike? Okay, so actually one quick, more of a technical question for Alex, so. Oh, hold on, let me, I muted him. Speak. Um, Alex, you are unmuted if, for the question, go ahead. Okay, so quick question. Uh, you had said that um, you're doing this in Hollywood. Did you, did the NC actually get funded by the city clerk or not yet? Yeah, we've gone over, a little over 5,000 um, already funded. No, but I mean, you actually received the money from the city clerk. Correct. Okay, and then quick, so the follow-up question on that is in the language on that NC, did you have the same um, language of uh, homemade on that application as well? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I only have one small concern um, and I don't disagree with anybody, anything anybody said. We have two other one, two other uh, NPGs later tonight. Um, and I recognize, you know, Alex got his in first. So there, that is something to be said, um, but we have two others and they're also asking for money essentially for food for the homeless um, or the unhoused. I apologize if I'm using it in the right terms. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind if there is, I mean, we're happy to split this. If we've got 10,000 to work with and we want to split it more evenly or, um, and I know we've got another one coming, just something to have in mind um, if anybody wants to vote. Um, okay, John, go ahead, you're up. Okay, a couple things. I had requested Charlie include in our packet tonight material from the city clerk's office on how, how things should be funded, which I basically have highlighted. 
I've taken the exact wording and all I've done is highlighted the areas that I felt needed to be looked at. Uh, and we, ha we have these three requested and let me tell you, I get it. People are hungry. We need, we need to do our civic responsibility. But this is not like I can reach in my wallet or reach in my checkbook and write a personal check from John Lieberman to yikes. These are city funds. And there's a certain amount of due diligence we need to do. Uh, and if you look at what I've got, got, the budget is realistic and supported by documentation. The organization or individual is capable of completing the project. The work plan is detailed, specific, and feasible. The project is supported by the community. The number of stakeholders that will benefit from this project are shown. The project implementation process will build community. And when it comes to credibility, what evidence proves that the organization is currently achieving its goals? What kind of reputation does a group enjoy within the community and beyond? Capability. What skills does the organization staff and or board bring to the project? Are they relevant to the project's aims? And the other big thing is conflict of interest. And it is apparent conflict or real conflict. And I say that not as a dig against you, Olga, because I don't think there is a conflict with you. I think there is an apparent conflict. But I have another NPG tonight that has got the same thing. And both of these basically on the form request that the form and everything be re resubmitted to the city attorney's office. You went ahead and called the city attorney. I don't know that that necessarily in and of itself is sufficient. Over and above that, we don't have any funds that are allocated to anything right now other than several festival and movies in the park, both of which are long-term projects and have been going on for almost a decade on several festival and maybe five, seven years on uh, movies in the park. What I'm trying to get across is if it's the will of the board to support this, I have no problem in doing it, but let's do it with a process that's not gonna give us another grievance. Let's refer it to a committee, get the money changed out of Soro Festival, if that's where we wanna change it out of, or get additional monies allocated to further NPGs, then let's vote on it. Uh, but if I, look, if I look at the application for yikes, it's still very loose, and I don't think there is any sort of itemization that I would call a legitimate budget. I would like to say I would like to see some specific some specificity as to just how much Yikes is going to spend on the various specific components for items in within the Soro area, and what sort of I won't say guarantees because you can't guarantee it. That the funds that the food will be distributed within the solar boundaries. I think we have a, we have a ability to do this. I think we can do it relatively quickly. I think we could get this done in terms of doing the process work before the end of our of the, this current month, so that we can bring it up at the next board meeting. I'm willing to commit to doing my part of it and calling a. Uh, I guess it would be a finance committee meeting to evaluate all of the NPGs. And again, EA Wikes came up first and that's the only reason that I'm discussing that. I could with equal clarity go through the other two NPGs we have and point out things that I have problems with on those. So my, it's my recommendation that we defer this for a month and we call a finance committee meeting, which Olga, I'd certainly be willing to have you come along and represent uh, the uh, 
homeless and the impoverished uh, in terms of advocacy and see if we can put it together. Thanks, John. Uh, Gloria? Really sorry, can I move to extend the meeting 30 minutes? Uh, I would move to extend it for till 10.30 because I don't think there's any way we're going to be done by 10 o'clock. Is that a second? I'll second it. Uh, anybody opposed? Hearing none. All right, Gloria, go ahead. Um, because John mentioned his willingness to coordinate the process for all the organizations who are requesting funding, um, I wanted to understand the concern too about the conflict of interest with Olga. I do understand if this was personally benefiting Olga's pocketbook, but it's just an organization that she volunteers for. So how do you really define a conflict of interest? And I think that's important to understand. So in the future, if we're, if we're, if we volunteer with other organizations and we talk about, you know, the things that SOAR do, we're careful as we present the needs of those organizations. To be clear, um, she did check and verify that there was no conflict, right? That's what, that is what we're obligated to do. If we think there's a conflict, go ask the city attorney. City attorney came back and said, there is no conflict. I, I don't see the problem with the, this conflict issue. Um, Steve, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, I agree with everything uh, John Lieberman said. I think those are important causes. I think they're close to the heart for all of us, but at the same time, we are handling public funds and a little bit of vetting goes a long way in the integrity of our body. To put my money where my mouth is, I donated to Yikes. Uh, I found him online during this meeting and uh, keep up the good work, great job guys. And um, I also agree with what Gloria said um, about Olga's conflict of interest. I'm not sure where there's a conflict of interest here. Um, Mike. Yeah, I definitely think that all three should go to committee, not just for uh, that, but also gives the, it needs to be a committee that gives the general public um, a way to weigh in and give their opinion and uh, help shape these as well. So if it is a finance one, it's got to be something where we get public notice. As far as conflict of interest, unless Olga is like on the board of directors, you know, or some sort of leadership position, there's definitely no conflict of just volunteering for an organization. So if that hopefully answers your question, Gloria. Are you moving to table to send it to committee? What was that? Yeah. So I would like to move this and well, as well as the other two that I'll, will, somebody will do as well to move this to a committee. Um, my question is, is finance committee open to the public though, or should it be quality of life, which definitely is open? So that's a question for John. Uh, finance committee is open, but I would be glad to have it go to quality of life. I, I'm not, uh, I, I have, I have no stake in the game as to which committee does it as long as it is vetted. Um, well, let's, uh, I don't want to move it quite yet, but uh, I guess because uh, we got other people who want to speak on it. So let's, before we move anything, let's get the other three to. Okay, go ahead, uh, Rich. Can, can I have no, a. No, John, 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 in order. And right now we already, we're already super late, guys. So I'm going to cut you off on them. Rich, you're up. Yeah, I have a couple questions. John, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I seem to recall that you had stated that approximately $14,000 is allocated each year for the MPGs. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. But th this year we uh, allocated about eleven thousand dollars, or eleven eleven thousand one hundred. Ian, that's on a fiscal year basis. That's on that's on the fiscal year basis, June uh, July first to July first. And it seems, uh, you know, as part of the uh, uh, neighborhood council, we basically uh, hear the applicants as they come in, uh, and if we deem it appropriate, we uh, approve a set amount uh, such that towards the end of the year, the uh, amount allocated could be depleted. Is that right? 
Uh, that's right. And uh, th there are two other aspects of this, which probably should be considered. And the consideration should be, uh, we have some funds this year that we are probably not going to get next year. Uh, with the city's financial condition, I doubt very strenuously that we're gonna get 32,000 as a budget for next year. So we may want to consider holding a small amount of that over just to cover operational expenses for next year depending on what the city does to us. And we don't know what they're gonna to do to us as of today. Uh, the, the other part that I wanted to get across to, uh, when I tried to interject the thought was, uh, I do think that if it goes to quality of life and that's why we can still need to have a finance committee meeting to just move some funds around so that the funds are available to be sent for NPGs. So it can be a combined meeting, it can be a meeting or two or dual meetings. I, I don't really care. Yeah, I, I support uh, putting it over to committee, whether it's finance or quality of life to uh, really evaluate the three that are before us today uh, so that we could uh, fully vet them and make the correct determination as to if and how the funds should be allocated. Um, we have before, if for fair, fair, fairness sake, you know, we're gonna let Ken speak and then Terry, and if somebody wants to make that motion to, to move it, we'll let him do it at that time. So Ken, you're up first and then Terry. And just to be clear, if you're, if you're in the public and your hand is now up to speak on this topic, it is now too late. The public comment period is closed on this issue only. Go ahead, Ken. Okay, so uh, one is I, I had a concern uh, based on our website, something I, I read it a few months ago when I was looking through the website for other purposes, and I remembered it, I looked it up. Uh, on our website, it states that any given 501c can only apply for a, a, a particular grant once during a, a fiscal year. Now, um, I'm, what exactly that means, I'm not sure of. I don't even know if that as a rule actually applies, 